Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the nine club. I'm very excited, everybody. I just had to cut off my intro right there. Episode 100. Huh? Mm -hmm. We did it. I am exhausted, bro. Let me tell you, I need a vacation. <laughs> but we have a special, special, special <laughs> guest. How many specials are you going to give him? A hundred. Yeah. hundred yeah, specials. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Tony Hawk hello, is hello. with us. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by. Sure. Thanks Episode for having 100. me. Are, I am honored. I, you guys, you guys deserve all the credit for getting oh, to 100. Thank but you. I'm honored to be your 100th guest. Thank, so thank you. you. We thank thought you. it was only fitting, yeah. you know, um, Mr. Tony Hawk. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. Very <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Nine Club, 100, 900. 900. I mean, there's oh. just so many things. Wow. You know? Yeah, yeah I really, I, w I refused to wait till episode 900, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> uh, and I don't think I'd be relevant anymore. Trust so. me. This is our last episode, actually. This is, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're ending it with okay. a bang. Yep. <laughs> no, but um, seriously, thank you so much for coming of by. It's an uh, honor to have you here. Oh, thank you. It's an yes, honor to be here. Yes, yes. And I noticed you brought a, uh, you, 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 you brought a, a mini me of yourself. I I brought a gift for you guys. Oh. I was I was kind of searching my office, and then okay. I realized that um, wow. I thought this would be funny because and it's uh, it's the right size. It's a, it displays. <laughs> it's actually uh, perfect. I got to throw out a first pitch at a San Diego Padres game. Okay, and they made these for me in because of that. That's amazing. Wow. It's a little mini. I think they were uh, selling these, which is kind of weird. And oh. I don't, it doesn't really look like me. It kind of looks well, like. Oh, it's got your name on some, it, so yeah, people I don't can know. know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a little mini bobblehead. It's standing on a quarter pipe. Standing on a quarter pipe. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's for you guys. And thank you so you. much. We don't Raj. always have to display it. But, no, no, uh, we will. We will. This oh, is uh, Raj. Put that in the background there. Will you put find a little place for that thing, man? You know. <laughs> and I like I like your clever sort of. Oh, we sneaky displays. Yeah. Yeah. Raj you know, is good at that. Yeah. It's all me. It's all me. Actually, I spend <laughs> I spend one time you I spend it. days on it. It did not yeah. go unnoticed. <laughs> <laughs> no, Roger does a great job with yeah. that stuff. But uh, sorry, you can't have the shirt though. That's my shirt from Animal Chin. Oh, the, bon the pink literally bones? The oh. shirt I wore during the... I can't believe you still sequence. have that. Yeah. I can't either. Um, but my wife, she... You know those vacuum mm -hmm. bag things? Yes. Like the, I see infomercials bags? for those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She got those. Okay. And just put a bunch of stuff in. And then I saw this sort of pink coming out of them. I was like, I wonder if that's... And I <laughs> un poofed it <laughs> and it was and it was yeah no it was as much way. stuff we had in the garage a little that's time incredible it is, yeah. yeah let's talk about this shirt real quick because uh, you said that was when you were filming um the, animal the, chin animal the, chin the, the, the ramp sequence okay. the end of animal chin that's the shirt i was wearing gotcha gotcha and how long did that take to film oh that sequence yes the uh, whole, yeah. i want to say four days oh okay i think four we days. stayed at the ramp for a day or two and then we shot everything in four days i mean but that was the that was how you did skate videos back then. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, even yeah. earlier, they were doing four hours. Yeah, People yeah. would film and their I, parts in four hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if something took more than five or six tries, we got to move on. You got to <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh -huh. go. <laughs> was it stressful at all? Were you thinking it was just, this is going to be crazy? We had nothing to gauge it to. Like, we, we had nothing to compare yeah, it to. Like yeah. Yeah. We didn't know. So we just, hey, do what you can do. And then... <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, you try a little something harder, or mm -hmm. you know, try to push it a little further because you knew that's the one that's on video. But but we weren't in the video mindset. Skateboarding back then was all competition. Yeah, yeah. right. E even when we were shooting Animal Chin, that was all just this weird. Like for us, it was just we thought it was a weird art project by Stacy. <laughs> just <laughs> we didn't think it was yeah. some monumental. Did he hand you guys a script before you guys shot it? It was loose. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There was a storyline, there was a little bit of dialogue, but it was more like, we need you guys to get from here to here in this yeah. scene. Oh, kind of like Curb Your Enthusiasm based, yeah. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> definitely, Okay. and we were definitely um, right at the cusp of improv. <laughs> 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 right. We knew exactly what we were doing. But that's amazing, great video. Thanks. Um, <laughs> which brings me to your just recent one, 50 at 50. Ah, uh, yes. Happy birthday, by the way. Belated, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, belated, yes. 50 years old, doing 50 tricks. Yeah. Uh, it was a, uh, it was an effort. Well, let me, let me, here's, here's, <laughs> I have a question for you and you could answer it if you want, or you can keep it a mystery if you want to. We had a debate over something. We okay. were wondering <laughs> if 
this was filmed in one day or multiple <laughs> I, days? I wish it was one day. <laughs> ah, I think I won the bet. Yep. <laughs> you did, yeah. Yeah. Because um, yeah. you wore the same thing. You know, was I that did. done on purpose? I just con- was that well, continuity? I wanted continuity. Okay. I, I definitely thought that would be projected that, yeah, this all happened at one time. For sure. Um, right. And so, long story short, I, I shot it over the course of about six weeks. Okay. Um, we got about three to six tricks a day. Wow. Um, but the funny thing is, is, sometimes people would show up to session and I'd have to hide everyone behind a camera. Oh. And so they wouldn't see him on the deck. Yeah. yeah it's pretty funny. <laughs> Excuse me, everybody. Uh, I'm going to drop in if you it don't was, mind. It felt, <laughs> very, it felt very pretentious being Did like, it? Okay, you got, and like, you know, they'd bring, or a kid would come with his, his mom is there, and it's like, ah, sorry, you can't sit on the couch while we skate. You got to like stand over here on oh, the deck no. behind this camera. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> or go up to that room up there. Listen, if Tony yeah. Hawk's telling you to get the hell out of there, you should get, you should yeah. go. But it was the first time I ever made those demands of people. So it was, right. just felt kind of strange. <laughs> Amazing, though. How, how was, oh, how was that yes. fall, dude? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. So, I knew I knew going into it that if whatever we we're gonna get fifty tricks and hopefully ones that I created or pioneered on mm-hmm. vert, but um, but I knew the 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 elephant in the room is why is there no nine hundred right? And I just knew I I was I, gonna ask that too. Well, you said yeah. when you <laughs> when you had forty eight, right? Yeah, Rush? you said something like it was your last one, right? Ah, uh, it felt like it at the time. Oh, yeah. Di- <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, my ramp's too slippery now to do it. Mm. And so I knew I wouldn't be able to do it to my ramp, and I didn't want to go to another ramp to do it. And yeah. I mean, honestly, not just because of that. It it always beats me up to no end. So yeah. Yeah. does it? Yeah. Even if I went and did it on another ramp, that would probably be the very last thing I'd do for that video. But okay. Didn't you want to, though? Didn't you feel like, oh, maybe I should, this is my... Maybe I should <laughs> have it in there. Like I wrestled with it a little bit, but then I then I, I I think I tried to swallow my pride and say, you know, I hope that these fifty tricks kind of rest on their own. Okay. I hope yeah. that absolutely, you know, that those are accolades enough, and that we don't have to always have this thing hanging there. So right. I was hoping <laughs> right, that, right, right. that that spoke for itself. And I'm not going to lie that that seven twenty did happen. It was my forty ninth trick that I did. That, oh, that's oh, all oh, true. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. And. My very first thought as I flew off the ramp <laughs> oh my was, God. holy shit, I'm not going to finish the video. <laughs> <laughs> first thing. Because not- we were only, I was only a, two weeks away or a week away from my birthday at that point. And I was like, I can't believe <laughs> of all the things, I'm going to be the one flying through the gap of my own ramp. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Right. that I've ridden for the last 15 years. Well, they could have just put the, that 49th trick and then just replayed the 900 at the X Games. <laughs> you know, that was yeah. 100. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a continuity aspect. I know, I know, I know. Quite I know. Right. Um, so I was kind of like, and then once I landed and realized I was going to survive yes. and still skate, I thought, Oh, cool. We got, we got an ender. We got an ender. Now I don't have to do 900. We got this. On to the next. I mean, what a slam, though. Did you have to <laughs> chill for a little bit, or did you get right back up? I got you, up. You, I look did, shook, I, you look shook a little I did bit. Get up yeah. and do, I, I did get up and do another trick. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah, but not the one, it, whatever. The big spin nose grind? Is that what you were talking about? Is that that's the next? not the trick I did that day. Oh, I mm-hmm. actually did a different trick that I don't think we used in the video, just because oh, I was okay. so kind of stiff and forcing it. Like, okay, I can yeah. do it. It's okay. <laughs> so I'm good. Yes. Oh, I think I know what I tried to do. I, after that, I tried to do a sack tap, and I just wasn't loose enough no. <laughs> to make it happen. Man, what a slam, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Guys, I, feel I, mean, you were going, that, I didn't think that's what I'd be coming here for, to talk about that slam. But Well, it was, it was impressive to get up from and then finish, yeah. finish it, it off. It was scary oh, as hell, it was, too. It was scary, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're flying right into another skate park, into, into almost a, a pillar. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got lucky in that I landed sort of on that wedge bank, and that was yeah. made it so I fell a little bit less. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That would have been the last thought that was going through my mind, but uh, but I can't finish the video. <laughs> That's uh, it's kind of. I mean, it, it's a little sad, but it's true. You know, yeah, you're, you're yeah. used to getting hurt and stuff like that, and then you have the. I guess you have the experience where you're like, oh, this is bad. Yeah, and plus and you've not been like, work- oh, I'm gonna get hurt. It's like, oh man, I yeah. was so close to getting this done. That's what I'm saying. Plus yeah. you've been working so hard on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and then then that happens. But um, are the <laughs> are the lip tricks like uh, was that the hardest part for like doing like actual ledge type of tricks? It seems like that would be probably the hardest part of the, the edit. Not really. Really, I, I feel like that's kind of how I shifted. I think that's how I've transitioned into getting old and mm. still trying to be progressive. Mm-hmm. Is doing the lip tricks because really, like those are more low impact. I know how to bail out of them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's not like you're, you're coming safer. down from twelve feet from a spin. 
and you're getting KO'd. It's yeah. more like, it's just yeah. a little more technical. And so for me, those were not as hard as some of the, like, uh, what, heel flip, very lean, you know, mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> I, I used to have that in my back pocket all the time, mm -hmm. and it took me a long time to do it for this video. And the one I got was sloppy, but I was like, "That's that's all I got." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and like three sixty flip mute, I I had a couple of them, and I just couldn't land them. And we were and we were spending you know an entire session on that, and I was like, "I gotta let it go." How tired do you get trying that? Like for a whole session? Like how, when when do you start feeling? Uh, I can go for about an hour and a half to two hours on my own trying one trick. Okay. Which I learned basically from the birdhouse video. Yeah. Oh. Like doing Saturdays, if I had a trick in mind, it was like, all right, you know, I, I know that I'm going to get exhausted after this much time. And if I don't have it by then, I got to let it go. Gotcha. Or try it the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and a couple of them, I just had to let go. Yeah. Hey, it happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've let, I've let a couple manuals go, you know, <laughs> yeah. I really Quite wanted to get, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> it sucks though. It eats at you. It, I, you know, it's totally. just that one that got away and it's just like, oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, since we're already on topic, um, the 900, right? How many have you actually done? There was a time when we did the Huck Jam that I was doing them almost every other night. Like oh every, every other night. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'd say like we did 30 shows. I probably did it about. I don't know, 10 or 15 times. Okay, like because every time I see footage of you, you rip your helmet off, you took your knee, you're well, taking pads off. It's, it's always, always like, feels, whoa, this really took it out of there you. Know, there always is a sense of finality to yeah. it because it, it, it's always hard to get to. Sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it happens a little easier. Sometimes I take a few you know, heavy hits. Mm -hmm. and so there's always a, a, a great sense of relief and yeah. that's that's what you're seeing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like, it's like, yes, I'm it's just like, oh, thank God it's <laughs> over. Yeah. Yeah. I, can go, I can go home now. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah pretty much. And, and uh, yeah, so I, and it, it never got, it never got easier, but it, it definitely got to be that I could get out of the danger of it a little more. Right. Like the, I, I learned, I even learned how to, like if I miss the grab, I learned how to get out of that situation. Because if you miss the grab, your instinct is to open up and stop spinning. And if you open up and stop spinning, to do a 900, you pull further out from the ramp. Mm -hmm. So you're just out swimming over the flat <laughs> yeah. if you stop spinning. Oh, if you continue to spin, your body goes back into the transition. transition. Right. Oh. So I learned that <laughs> the hard way. <laughs> but I learned it eventually where it was like, if you miss your grab, just keep spinning. Okay. Yeah. So Crazy. anyone out there, you want to do 900? There you go. That's a There's secret. Secret tip. <laughs> I'll write that one down. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's weird because I actually, I was there when you did the 900. In oh, San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was the one that hugged you. I don't know if you remembered when you landed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. Oh, I, <laughs> oh yeah. I've seen it on video yeah. many times. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. He had his yellow yeah. helmet on and everything, yeah. you know. Okay, cool. It's Andy Max sitting over there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a few, <laughs> like, there's a few key people you see in that. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Weiss was there, too. Oh, <laughs> Bob, Brian Patch. Yeah, it was like a vert collective. Andy Max. Now, yeah. why did you want to start trying it right there? Was it just something, like, in the air? Oh, where, or did you go in going, like, I got I'm going to do this 900? I didn't think we're going to that either. Uh, uh, what would you add, uh, Tony? Okay. Uh, you want to know like, the, the history of the 900 or just that night? <laughs> yeah. Well, just like, because that was the first time you did it, right? Or maybe you did it in It was secret. the first time I made it, yes. Okay. But but at this big contest and like this, uh, in front of him, I mean, is that more like you want to get, you know? No, it like, wasn't like that at all. No. So I had been trying it, I mean, really for 10 years prior to that wow. off and on. But, but seriously, at that point, I was trying it for five years. Damn. So like, you know, really, really going to a ramp with that in mind. Mm. You know, sometimes I'd drag a Tiva with me. I'm like, this is the day. It's going to happen today. <laughs> and then eventually got really close, put one down at the plan B ramp, mm. went into the flat. There's a sequence of it. Broke my, broke my rib. That was mm. 95. Okay. Um, and then tried it every once in a while, but, but that kind of haunted me, breaking my rib, you know? Mm. And then when X Games came, I mean, you know, there were best trick contests, during that time, like there were a few through that year. And um, I kind of was strategic with the best trick on. I was like, all right, I have a trick that is hard. I know I can make, and then I'll go on from there. Right. And so that's kind of how I played it. And and my best trick at the time was a Varial 720. I mean, I've told this story a bunch of times. But. Okay. So at the X Games, I was like, all right, I got I to gotta have a couple tricks in my back pocket before going to Varial 7. And I did those pretty early. I did, I think I did a... I might, I, this, it's been a while, but I think I did a, like Gage Twist 360 Varial just to get something in the bag. Okay. Then I went to Varial 7. I made that really quick. 
like shocking for me it's shocking okay because right? i only done two in my life before that one for the birdhouse video oh, wow. one for a different best trick event oh. at um one of those hard rock events so maybe you were thinking like this might be the opportunity now no i'm, I'm busting no no no. <laughs> no. It okay. like, no it was more like maybe you're on fire and you're like, like this is it i hope you can make a barrel seven that was my that was my mindset going oh. into it like i hope i can make a barrel seven mm -hmm. so then i made that and then there's a debate whether I just decided to start trying 900s because I thought, you know, it'd be fun for the crowd to see. But um, Don Bostic thinks that, um, that Duncan put it in my head where Duncan's like, why don't we just see a 900? And that's very likely that I heard him say it. I was like, all right, here, you know, here you go. here's what they look like. Uh -huh. <laughs> here's, here's how I bail them. How, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, you know, and, and that night was kind of loose. Like it was, the time was, you know, it was already kind of running down. It was just kind of like, mm -hmm. it didn't seem like the, it, for me, it wasn't this monumental effort thing that I was looking at going, this is where I'm going to finally do it. It's going to change everything. You know, it was just like, yeah, here you go. And then as I, that ramp was really good, okay. by the way. So it was it was just sticky enough. It was really fast. And so I had that advantage. I mean, I had been trying it at the Plan B ramp, the Human ramp. Oh, um, wow. which That was a small ramp. Really sucked, yeah. yeah. Was, <laughs> that ramp was not conducive for nines <laughs> at all. Um, and uh, a couple of contest ramps, even through the years, where, you know, at the end of the contest, I would just start trying it. And just, they weren't they weren't built that well, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was the 90s. It wasn't like ramps were, were not great. Right. Um, and so then that ramp was really good. I, I kept getting a consistent spin and I started seeing my landing because I was getting a lot of speed and that's the key. Like you got to get high enough that you can actually like see where you're going to land. And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm seeing landing. Like finally, and it used to be, I used to just throw it down. Oh, Just okay. throw it on the wall and hope that oh, I was you can stand right. up going straight. So yeah. I ne not, never thought I was going to stand up. Yeah. yeah. For the record. <laughs> now, you, now you're getting a point of landing right in your, in your visual. Yeah, I'm getting a point of landing. Yeah. And, and so then I was like, well, and then, and so then I just started throwing it on the wall and, and also thinking like, I don't care if I break my rib again. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, totally. I'll, sure. I'll, I'll take one again, like <laughs> yeah. for this, cause it's, yeah. this is such an, uh, such a great opportunity. Yeah, 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 so, right. so in my head, I was like, all right, I'm either going to like make this or I'm going to be taken away in an ambulance. And, and the time ran out and lander slam yeah lander slam and yeah. i was just trying it trying and then and then i started i started landing it i flew I, I mean i know there's a video but i i landed and i leaned forward of course mm -hmm. like i used to but i didn't get killed <laughs> and then i was like what if i shift my weight mid spin and you towards know it's back towards the back foot like even it out yeah and i never had that i never had that clarity mm. or the chance to have that clarity because i just didn't we didn't have the ramp or the setup or anything mm -hmm. and i was like so then i did that then i shot out and i was like oh i got, got it, it. Wow. you know what i mean i just went the other way yeah. with it right I, I got it so then i knew like i, I just got to figure out that balance and okay it, it worked right after that man wow. you get dizzy doing that too is it, is it, is it, <laughs> i mean i i I turn around to look um, at somebody behind me. I get dizzy. It's not. It's not that you get dizzy because you you have such time in between. Okay. And it, you know, in in the reality of of humans, it's only two and a half spins every minute or so. So it's not like yeah, yeah. You're not ice skating. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but you're but still it's spinning. No, no, no. You, you, get, you get disoriented for yeah. sure. Yes. And, and that first time, I mean, I will never forget the first time when I really committed to spinning, and I mm -hmm. and you, you go blind to the ramp twice. It's. Mm -hmm horrifying it's i bet i bet <laughs> yeah and then that time you got you you could actually see your landing and that's what did it seeing your landing that was it. yeah i mean yeah. for sure and like then shifting all, your all the other stuff like the, the support of the crowd and yes you know all everything like yeah like that uh, that all played into it but but the way that they presented it later where it was like this you know whatever there's all kinds of Conspiracy, <laughs> fake news and whatever but <laughs> but but the fact that they thought it was like this big set i was planning that i was like dude i <laughs> It's it could have been any time, right? like it, yeah. you know, it, it, it could have been on the human ramp, yeah. with, no, like, with with a Tiba shooting. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's know. the thing is, it like, could have been, been it could have been in Bourges, France, in 1989, which is the first time I ever tried it. See, whoa, like why would with, you wait? Okay, no, this is this is I'm gonna wait from 1989 <laughs> yeah. till yeah, yeah. yeah. Like no, what, is, would, what is this? Like this, is, I it, would never put myself through it, but you know, like but you want to do a trick, you're not gonna wait till the opportune moment. <laughs> You know, <laughs> right? Like, but, but the other thing was that people thought that that was like, that was the first best trick. Event. There, dude, there were oh, so many best trick yeah. events yeah, yeah, through yeah. the years right. that were boring as hell because everyone bailed, yeah. <laughs> me included. You know yeah, what I mean? It was yeah. like, everyone's trying the hardest thing you can do for 20 minutes. And one guy made one thing. Yeah.
There you go. I'm trying to get like a thousand bucks. Uh, if you're lucky. If that, yeah. <laughs> thousand bucks. How much did you get? Huh? were you talking about? How, how, much, how much did you get for the 900? Did you, oh, win? did you win the best best trick? I, yeah, the, yeah, you had to have. I'm sure he did. Uh, yeah, that was, was a couple grand. Whatever, that was. You got a gold medal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was up for debate because they were like, oh, it's after time. And I didn't, whatever, I didn't oh. care. Like, I would, you know. Mm, yeah. Give him the money. Give him the check. <laughs> Give him the big check. You know? You got, the hey, you yeah. got a 401 opener with that one. That was one of the. <laughs> yeah. that, that was, I remember. Oh, who shot that? Um, who shot that? Was it Danny Minnick? Maybe. Oh, I, I, I don't know. know. Interesting. Someone shot it, and and they were like, "Dude, I got it!" Because you know they were like, there was only a, one angle, yeah. Yeah, but there was a, a embargo on cameras back yeah. then at the X Games. Mm -hmm. Like Whitey oh. was the one who shot that sequence, and he had a, he had his camera covered with a shirt. The X Games didn't want camera people there. They wanted yeah, their own or people. they would have they, they would let skate the photographer yeah. they would let skate photographers on the deck like for the for the practice okay. for the first run and the, you know whatever it was all super mm. strange and exclusive and so I I don't remember who shot it but someone shot it and they're like dude I got it on video I was like oh do you think it'll make it in four one one did you, you did not that was did you really, one of the first things I said yeah really? and they're like I, I'm gonna send it to him it'll probably be in there I was like sweet and and I remember walking away like that's sick I'm gonna be four one opener so have you gotten one before a four one opener yeah. But, but you wanted this. Yeah, it's it was so funny how four and one, one yeah. was like the thing, right? Like the dun da da. I was, wanted that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Next games was like, was you know the the non skaters were watching it. Yes, and where the skaters were watching, they were watching four and one and Tampa Pro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's where you had to show your stuff. That's awesome. Well, there was that other kid too. He just did the ten eighty, but it wasn't really. He he went down. Uh, what was the kid's name? The uh, Jagger. No, 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 I mean, no. Tom Shar. Tom Shar. Oh, yeah, yeah. kid. But it, no, no. Are he you was living like, in a bubble. He was, a, he was a kid. You guys, he little, you guys gotta get out more. He was a he, he was a kid when he, he was, did. He was very young when but, that but happened. But he, yes. he Tom Shar is a man now. Of course and, he and is. Is killing it. Killing it. Yeah. But but he was little little Grom, ten eighty. But yes. he, he you know he dropped in on the thing. He wasn't okay, pumping. I want to I want to squash pumping. this uh, <laughs> this whole um, theory that somehow when you do a a spinning trick on a mega ramp that it doesn't. Like it doesn't count as much. Go ahead. F coming from the experience of a vert skater that has skated mega ramps, mm -hmm. mega ramps are so frightening. Yeah. <laughs> right. When you're suddenly twice as high as you've ever been, mm -hmm. looking at a transition that's two to three times as big as you've going ever been, yeah. ever. that is, and and the risk factor is tenfold for all that stuff. Yeah. Right. So if you can spin a 900 going 15 feet out, more power to you. That is one of the scariest things that's okay. ever happened, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't make it any easier. Yeah. Yes, you have more airtime. Yes, you can spin slower. Mm -hmm. But you're still very, very much at risk of killing yourself doing that. Yeah, okay. More so maybe than on a vert ramp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so to do a 10A, they're like, well, you did it on a mega ramp. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you know, and when yeah. Tom did it, like his last 180 was still coming down the ramp. Like he was way below the coping and mm -hmm. still spinning. Like that stuff, I, I would never discount that. Okay. That's yeah. That is, gnarly, that yeah. is super difficult and frightening and deserves all the credit. And, okay. you know, since then, I think Mitchie did 1080. I, I want to say like... Mm -hmm. Asher Bradshaw might have done. I, hmm. I you know, like, wow. It's not. It's not a regular occurrence. And nor is 900. Like only a few people still do 900s. But yeah. whatever. Like that's. Um, but that that whole thing where the, you know I've heard arguments or I've s yeah, seen I mean, all the noise you were, online and yeah. just like, dude, I I don't want to do a 900 <laughs> no. 15 feet up <laughs> yeah. or 10. I've done them, yeah, like yeah. or 10. No, no, that ship has sailed for me. <laughs> yeah, no, but no 1080s. No, uh -uh. I, I could barely like you see. I could barely do 720s now without <laughs> <laughs> flying off the ramp. So, <laughs> what's after 1080, Raj? Do we know? 1260. What's a tw 1260. Yeah. Mm. I used to hang out with too many rollerbladers. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> well, those guys spin. They yeah. spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a great feeling that must have been, <laughs> well, though. Yeah, you know, to uh, pull that off—the thing that you've been trying for years and years and years—in front of a crowd and to have all the, you know, the hugs and the congratu congratulatory. What did it was, yeah. I just you didn't. Know? I, you know, I didn't want to. I, yes, but but it, there is also like, if you step back from it, it that that was just another trick. In terms of skateboarding and milestones, mm -hmm, like it, mm -hmm. it, it, it got a lot of attention, and I guess I'm hugely proud that it happened. But at the same time, it was like that was just another trick. Like, 
I did it for my first 720 on a backyard ramp in Sweden with like three dudes watching. <laughs> <laughs> no one cared. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? But for me, it was a big deal. Yeah. And, and so I still had that same sort of mentality. I was like, oh, cool, another new trick. And then all of a sudden, I was getting stopped in airports. Crazy. Like, Dude, Tony Hawk, 900. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, how do you even care or know about that? That's insane. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, that, uh, is there a trick? Including the 900, that, that was your most proudest trick, like you said, maybe in the back row in Sweden? or I, I, I have a, a, a deep sense of pride for Ollie 540s because mm. when I first started trying that, I did it completely as a joke. Okay. You really? know, I would just go up in the Ollie and spin, like, you know, go go pretty high doing it. And I was yeah. like, ha, 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 Ollie 540. And, <laughs> and everyone would laugh and, you know, my board would be flying on my feet halfway. And then I started trying it sort of at coping level and realizing I could possibly sort of kick turn out of it. Mm -hmm. And one day I just did it on my ramp. Um, and I remember there was like a couple dudes there from Brazil with a video camera that just came to skate my ramp. And they were freaking out. Like they, they were that excited. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and, and just in terms of how you could control a skateboard and keep it on your feet and all that, like I felt for me, it, it broke some barriers. Mm. And so I was really proud that like th that thing I, I joked about that I thought was impossible worked. Wow. Um, and I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess the, if I had one that was sort of my personal okay. prize and, and the fact that a few guys still do it, including Jimmy Wilkins, that it's it gets me hyped. Yeah. And he does it way better than I've ever done it. He's incredible. <laughs> you know, when you land a trick like that too, even if there's three people there or, or 5,000 people yeah, there, yeah. it's still that, 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 that feeling of oh, for excitement sure. yeah, for those yeah. people too. Yeah. Yeah. Probably kickflip five forties too. I think oh. I, I only ever made two of those or kickflip McTwist. I only ever made two of those, and for me that was like combining street tech with vert, right? You know, spinning, and so I was really excited about that. And okay. and you know, I always thought like, oh, that's that's impossible, or you know, that's can only be made once or twice. And then like Danny Mayer came in, was doing it every other run. I was like, oh. <laughs> that's how you do it. okay i get it all yeah. right yeah get some pointers wrong yeah exactly have you ever done a trick that like you've landed before but never documented i think my my first the first time that i did frontside 540s it, it was like 1981 maybe um no one had done frontside five except D Bill, uh billy ruff did units which is a you know yeah, a yeah. frontside 540 yeah. hand plant mm. so i learned units and then i would go and trick myself and not put my hand down and then i started doing frontside fives and i was starting to do them like higher and higher and standing up at del mar yeah. and those first ones i did were probably some of the best ones i ever did and landing like fully standing up and, yeah. and clean and, and i never got one on video like that like oh, wow. at del mar in that way and um i was just really stoked that like there was a 540 yeah, yeah. you know because no one had done 540s yet Dude, front side seems gnarly. Yeah, <laughs> front side is, is, I hesitate to say easier, but it, it's easier to spot your landing. Mm. Oh, okay. That's why you see people who do it can do it all the time, every time, at low, in bowls, and you know. Do you know how many contest wins you've had? Uh, I, I mean, I, it's, it's like 70 or more. Well, I had to count one time for my book. Okay. <laughs> um, but it was some, yeah, something like that. Can you imagine Raj 70? It's a lot of trophies. A lot of trophies. Do you it have felt, all these trophies or do <laughs> no, you? No, I used to no. just give them away. Oh, you seriously? Um, to what? Friends or family or something? No, sometimes I just give them away on the spot. A no lot way. of times. Yeah. It always felt like. Do I take it home? No, I don't know. I just felt so sort of. Uh, He's self-important. He's standing mm. with all your trophies. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think okay. as a kid, like I would see pictures in skate magazines. And I think what turned me off is that I remember looking at BMX magazines back then. And all you would see is some kid with Little all of this. Yeah. And it was just like, there were so many that was meaningless. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, who, who cares? Like, and also just to, to, I don't like the idea that you have to rest on your prior accolades all the time mm -hmm. okay you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. i always felt yeah. like i want to i want to be more current i want to just be like this is what i'm doing now here i am mm. check it out and so um i mean for sure yeah i regret like some maybe key trophies that i could have kept for kept, souvenirs yeah, but yeah, yeah. um but no it just didn't never meant that much to me and i and i 
Uh, both Roddy and I, I think that like I, he had the same vibe, just like oh, whatever. Like, what is this? <laughs> right. What does this mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I did my best. I'm stoked. That's it. Are you a very sentimental guy? Do you keep a lot of your? Uh, I mean, because you have the old. But did somebody uh, that, had kept that, that for come, you? So that, that came like totally by uh, surprise. Yes. Uh, so not really. You, I have, so I don't know how through all the moves and and just tossing stuff that I held on to my first skateboard. I don't know how that happened. And That's the one you get the Smithsonian, right? Yeah, and yeah. then I give it to Smithsonian. So now oh I don't have it anymore. <laughs> How does that happen, Tony? Does, does, do you call the Smithsonian's? No. Like, hey, hey, guys, uh, can I talk to uh, Floor 3? Uh, no, they they were doing an event mm. in front of the, the Smithsonian in D.C. Uh, that they wanted to, it was on American history and American culture, and they wanted to sort of theme it with skateboarding. Oh. And they asked a bunch of key players to donate something, including Rodney. Rodney was there, actually. Oh, sick. That's awesome. And I said... I had my first skateboard. Wow. And they're like, oh, really? Could you give it to me? And, you know, would you donate it? And and, I, and and my brother actually gave it to me. So my brother, it was a hand-me-down from my older brother. Okay. Wow. Who was a surfer and who taught me how to skate. Um, mm. So his board's in Smithsonian as well. So I had to call him. <laughs> no, I had to call him. And I was like, Steve, Smithsonian asked about the skateboard, but it actually is yours. And he said, uh, I'll never forget. He said, you know, I always thought that's where it belonged. Wow. wow! So, awesome. so wow. he and I, he and I flew there, and that almost gave me goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> handed, we handed it to them with uh, with white gloves on. They demanded like, if you're touching, you have to wear white gloves. Yeah. And right before we handed it to him, I grabbed it. I took one more run because they had mini ramp there, and they were freaking out. <laughs> they didn't want anything to happen to it. Yeah, like, they were they... stressing because I was like, I got to get a photo on like just one last one photo more, of riding. Yeah. And like, no, 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 no. The guys were like, run, the guys like chasing me on the flat on the mini ramp. Like, no. go. Stop, you're like, this is it. mine. I'm about to donate yet. to you guys. So I was going to break it. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> what board was it? Yeah, what board was it? Uh, it was a Bane fiberglass uh, with like wooden riser pads mm. and one streak of grip tape down the middle. And your brother gave that to you when you were a kid. He, he had a couple skateboards. He was out in the alleyway skating and I saw that one laying there. I was about eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, can I ride this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. And so then I took off down the alley yelling back at him, how do I turn? How do I turn? How do I turn? <laughs> and then I ran into the fence and I actually got like a splinter no in my finger. And and he's like, you got to lean. And so I reached down, I picked the board up, turned it back around and skated back to him. And, yeah. You know, it wasn't some great epiphany, but um, it was fun. And he's like, oh, you can just have that. It's amazing that you could remember stuff like that <laughs> because I mean, like my, I have my first skateboard. For some reason, I kept it. No idea why, you mm -hmm. know? Maybe to put it next year's in the Smithsonian. I hope so. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's just funny, those things. Like, I don't remember, like, getting it. I don't remember, like, getting on my skateboard for the first. But it's it's funny that you have these, like, memories. I do, yeah. You know? and, and, but like I said, it did. I, there wasn't some great like a moment. Or, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, the clouds didn't part, and suddenly I Jeez. knew this was it. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And also, but a lot of my friends, you know, this is late 70s, so mm -hmm. skating had just sort of become an, a trend. Um, and a lot of my friends had skateboards. So then I've had a skateboard that I could cruise around the neighborhood with them. Um, but then I realized I needed a kicktail because mm. everyone was doing kick turns on the little quarter pipes they built. And mm -hmm. so then I asked my dad, he took me to JC Penny and I got one out of the clearance bin. So I got a pro class skateboard out of the clearance bin, which was kind of like black Knight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever. I'm so, I'm so old. <laughs> um, I need Lance here for backup. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so then I got one with like a kicktail. And then not long after that, I got invited to go to the skate park for the first time. Oh, you did? Uh, with uh, a friend. A friend of mine was like, we're going to the skate park. And I was like, oh, yeah, I see. Like I used to see pictures of people in pools. And mm -hmm. so I was like, yeah, I want to go. And I went to the skate park and I saw people flying out of the I saw people flying out of the back bowls, which were like these little snake runs, mm -hmm. and I was like, "So I want to do that, <laughs> I want whatever it takes right. to do that." And then I went to the pool, and like these guys were flying out of the pool, and I was like, "This is I'm, I'm coming here as much as I can, <laughs> yeah, to try to figure this out." And you tried a 540 that day, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then I started trying 900s. <laughs> then I went right in, started grabbing mute. Didn't even know degrees of rotation. <laughs> well, it's funny now because these days you see little kids like that doing it, flying out of the pools and stuff. It's like, you're just like, whoa. There's this evolution where people see what's possible. There you go. And it's easier to get to. And now they have the facilities, they have the resources. Mm -hmm. 
you know, kids can yeah. kids can train to be Olympians now. There you go. Yeah. So, but they but truly, there are there are yeah. training grounds. I mean, you know, Woodward was the, was the catalyst for that. But mm-hmm. but when I was a kid, like, if you want to learn how to spin, you got to figure it out on that <laughs> cement. <laughs> And good luck. But, and there goes your teeth. Yeah. 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 But not only that, you're facilitating these these uh, these uh, skate parks now with the Tony Hawk. You're built. You've built like 400, 500 parks around the U.S. Yeah. I mean, for sure, that's that's the that is the work I'm most proud of. Yes. Um, yes. It's been. Yeah. I mean, that. The, the, but you're giving these kids now the opportunities like Woodward is Wood was Woodward, but the, I yeah. mean, now yeah, they're, ev- they're everywhere. Yeah. Well, it was you never, know? it was never lost on me that I got very lucky in, in growing up next to Del Mar mm-hmm. skate park. Cause mm-hmm. Del Mar was one of five parks in the U S at the time. Yeah. And it was my home way from home. And it's where I met my closest friends. It's where I, you know, really where I developed my identity mm-hmm. and my, my culture and my sense of self-confidence. And, and I never forgot that. So when I had a chance to, I don't know, affect change or mm-hmm. to do something about it. Um, and I had a voice that people would listen to. I was like, I want to make skate parks and, and I want to make skate parks that cater to the actual skaters. Cause at that point, I mean, this was around 2001 when it actually like decided I wanted to do something okay. um, charitable and something to, to, to make more parks. I got invited to a couple of different skate park openings and, you know, as a special guest, like, Mm-hmm. The, the, my one example that I've, I've spoken about before was there was a city outside of Chicago. They built a park. It wasn't a low income area. It was actually pretty affluent. Okay. And so they were paying me to come to the skate park opening mm. to promote it. And, and I was, you know, at the time like, yeah, cool. Oh, free trip. All right. Yeah. Woo. So I went and, and I got there the night before the opening and they said, uh, Hey, do you want to, do you want to check, have a sneak peek of the park? Because it's not open yet. I'm like, yeah, sure. So there's like city council dudes are against the fence, and I go in and I'm skating, and it was so bad. Like it was, <laughs> there was a set of stairs that would lead into a wall. It's <laughs> not no joke. Yeah. And their snake run was a winding sidewalk, <laughs> and uh, and like every every ledge was just low enough that your wheels would drag if you're going to slide it. Mm-hmm. Right, so it was like these low curbs, and and which actually makes it more dangerous, yeah, ironically. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I'm skating around, and I'm like trying to like jump the hip or do anything. It's horrible. And then finally, I came back, and they're like, "What'd you think? What'd you think?" And I was like, "It's, it's terrible." <laughs> is that what you said? You <laughs> so, told yeah, them. Yeah, this is really bad. I go, I go uh, you know, it's designed poorly, and and they said, you know what? That's what all the kids were saying when we built it. And we said, wait till Tony Hawk gets here, and he'll show you how to ride it. <laughs> and in that moment, I realized like. Oh, this is a problem. I got to yeah. do something about this. Yeah, and, right. and if this is the only part, like uh, this, this has to change. Well, in terms of the disconnect between the people who were getting the parks and the people who were providing them, that I wanted to be able to bridge that gap, but more mm-hmm. so I wanted to get that funding to lower income, needier areas. And, right. and I didn't know how to do it, but I just was like, this is what we need to do. This yeah. is the mission. And my brother, um, coincidentally, was the original president of the Tonac Foundation. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, but how did you feel going to that park? And now you're almost putting your like stamp of approval on it being there, right? And like cutting the yeah, ribbon or yeah. doing whatever. Well, I didn't, just I guess like, I wasn't, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> I wasn't looking at that deeply at the okay, time. Okay, okay. But I knew that that something had to be done about it. Yeah, mm-hmm, for sure. Because mm-hmm. that, that park was worse than probably the mall parking lot down the street. Wow. The mall parking lot is probably more fun. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the ledges are more skatable. That's yeah. what <laughs> so, I mean, like, how do you go about doing, like, um, a Tony Hawk Foundation? Like, do you call people? or so, Because you're well, a busy guy. You can't do everything. Right, well, you we can't put, go to legal Zoom and set up the LLC and all that, right? And you have to have a team. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, the foundation, like, the team is stellar. Yes. They are second to none, and they know exactly how to make the money be the most effective. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, we've given away about $6 million so far to help wow. fund almost 600 parks. Damn. But, but in that $6 million that has through matching donations and in-kind donations and just with our, with our endorsement, mm-hmm. it, it, I think it's been able to parlay over like a hundred million dollars in, wow. in funding. That's incredible. So, you know, our, our biggest grant is $25,000. That doesn't build a skate park, but no. sometimes it just puts them over the edge or it gives them the, the validation to get it greenlit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, or to, you know, finish it off. And, okay. and so, um, I feel like our endorsement goes a long way. We've had our money go a long way. Um, but originally 
we were kind of throwing stuff against the wall to see what would work. See what would work. We didn't really okay. know. And, and so I think the first time we actually got a round of grant applications, so it was like, all right, give us your application. We didn't really have any sort of format for it. Mm -hmm. We were getting like, <laughs> I'll never forget, we would get like a piece of paper with like three jump ramps written, drawn on it, super sketchy, like, oh, here's our plan. <laughs> Do you have a place? No. <laughs> Seriously. It's just like whatever, because they were just looking. They were looking for help, and yeah. we didn't know. You know, we we had to whittle it down. We had to figure out what are the parameters. How does someone qualify? And now, mm. now we we have all these markers where if you apply for a grant, then how much effort have you put in? Have you already gotten funding? Do you have a place? And and yeah. if they don't have those, we have the resources to show them how to get those things. Okay, right. but they're not eligible for a grant until they get those things. Interesting. And so we have all the we have all the know how. Yeah. And obviously, you know, we, we are giving funding as well too, but, but we're just, we're just a lot better equipped. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and for a while, all the money that I was getting from TV appearances and game shows and stuff, that was, that was the money for the foundation. Before oh, you we, were using your own money. The seed money for the foundation came from me being okay. on who wants to be a millionaire. Um, I remember that I was on like the sports celebrity edition, okay. which was coincidentally that the with, Regis? with Regis, yeah. coincidentally, my show was to air on nine 11. No, no way. Oh. Yep. Which is super weird. So creepy. They, wow. they pushed that back, obviously. Pushed it back a little bit, yeah. yeah. Still, yeah. still kind of got buried with the news cycle, of Ooh. course. Um, but uh, I, I called my brother for a que one of the questions, which was like $125,000 question. Okay. Um, it was a literature question about mm -hmm. Huckleberry Finn. And oh, wow. He's a literature major. Um, the funny thing is, when I, I asked him the question, I could hear him typing. So I knew he was Google oh. searching it. And I was like, oh, we're so You're fucked. Like, busted. he doesn't even know the busted. answer. And he's Google searching it. And immediately he's like, yeah, yep, that's it. Huckleberry fan. Yes. And he got Final it. answer. Wow. Final answer. Yeah. yeah. So 125000 That was the seed money for the okay. foundation. So you stopped at that point. You said, I'm done. 125000 Yeah. Okay, they let me on. see the next question, but I was. You were done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was like, who was the money, original though, Batgirl? Tony, it's a lot of money. 125000 Yeah. Well, I mean. I knew the cost of skate parks at yes. the time. So for me, I was like, well, uh, that'll help. But totally. then I, you know, we realized that we can make our money go a long way. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then after that, I made it a contractual obligation to any sponsor I had that if, if they were going to sponsor me, then they had to give a certain percentage okay, to the that's foundation. Awesome. Cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And that's how everything sort of went for a while. And now we're into bigger philanthropy. So we apply for bigger grants mm -hmm. from from you know huge foundations yeah. or from programs and and we have better we have a better donor um enclave so yeah must be a great feeling man great feeling to like it's be able yeah, to it's give back feeling. and build these skate parks and like wow is there like a the design team that like helps design the parks or is well the so in the beginning that was my job oh okay um because i got some wonky designs i got some <laughs> stuff that was just like dude no skaters have seen this and then there were always like there was there were a couple of crews in the northwest that were just building out their bowl fantasies and i was mm -hmm. like you guys you gotta do something that's under 12 feet here <laughs> do something you for know, everybody like right? yeah just yeah, a little bit yeah. just yeah. give this area yeah. give there the you kids go. a little something you know yeah. um and we clashed a couple times with that but definitely found it's common ground mm -hmm. and and now Almost all the skate park designers are very reputable, the ones that they go to. Okay. And I don't really have to mark up designs very Ooh. much. In fact, if anything, I just write like, this one looks good. Sick. <laughs> Can't wait to skate. But, but, but before approval. I would get a stack and it was daunting, I would be like, oh, wow. man. <laughs> Here we go. It's a lot of work doing a, designing a skate park. And it, doing no, it's a that, lot of work you know? fixing skate park designs. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was what I would say for airplane trips. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's a good. Yeah. What's an average cost of a skate park? I mean, I know it, it's oh, all over wow. the board, but like maybe an average. I know Stoner Park, but I think costs a million something, right, Raj? Oh, like granite. Yeah. It but, all, uh, I mean, we, we've done parks on just the most, like, uh, you know, a plot. Someone has a plot of, of concrete, mm -hmm. and they just need a couple of, like, modular quarter pipes okay. to have something for the community. Yeah. So we've done stuff on that level, which is, like, 10 grand. There you go. Or, you know, a Native American reservation um, where they just need something, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we help them with that. Then there are projects that are, like, Two million dollars. Wow! But it, it it runs the gamut. I would say a, an average good skate park is is probably half a mil. Half a mil. Yeah. 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 It ain't cheap out there, people. You know, <laughs> it ain't cheap. 
when cities are are um when they're hesitant to do mm-hmm. a skate park or they're against it somehow when it finally gets pushed through and it finally gets built they see that it gets used yeah sun up sun down there are always people there mm-hmm. way more than most other like sport fields. facilities yeah. that they have and they're like we need to build more of those there you go yeah. and i think too it happens also a lot of skate parks pop up it's doing great it's doing great and then they implement like helmet laws neat you know pad no laws and then and then and then it's deserted you know maybe a couple kids yeah. go there and you're just like you guys spent all this money. The irony, know. the irony of enforcing safety gear at a skate park mm-hmm. actually opens up the city to liability, because uh, then if someone does get hurt and they're not wearing pads, they can say, "Well, no one was there to tell me to wear pads." Mm-hmm. Has they're that ever age. happened though? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, actually? really. Mm-hmm. Sure. I've. I always thought the skateboarder would never. That would never happen before for some reason. Oh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, I I got sued <laughs> when I when I had my ramp in Fallbrook. I got sued because some kid came without permission, tried to drop in, broke his elbow. Whoa. Really? And his dad sued me. What? And I was like, You're I was in Europe <laughs> and he was trespassing. <laughs> what? And my homeowner's insurance had to settle it. Wow. Oh, wow. It was, but those are the eighties. But I mean, even, even, <laughs> even so though, I mean, you've, you've become a public figure, you yeah. know, uh, you've been in uh, commercials, TV shows. Uh, I've had, I mean, I'm share of lawsuits. The thing that, that really sucks about a lot of those things is that you sometimes just have to settle to save legal costs. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. there's a sense of you that's like, did I just somehow admit defeat to that? Totally. Yeah. By settling it? Because like I, I had this this one, <laughs> the skate park <laughs> oh, no. said, I stole their ramp design for my Huck Jam ramp. <laughs> their ramp, okay. I remember going to the skate park, their ramp sucked like, <laughs> there was no way i wanted to emulate their ramp in any shape or form right. <laughs> but because it was metal and because it was modular they're like oh you you stole the whatever you know this the is a skate park coming after tony hawk that you've stole our des- what is yeah, that well, but so when i because when i was set out to make our ramps for the huck jam uh-huh. i i put it on a um staging company to do with a company that makes oh. stages for big they could break it tours. down yeah. easily transport Kiss it con- like they did acdc they oh, did sick. you know at wow. the time they did britney spears with like that was the biggest you could get at the time oops yeah. i did it again yeah and they, <laughs> yeah. they made this giant stages that came up and down in a matter of hours mm-hmm. and so i said i need a ramp was there a portable. challenge for them to make that? Yeah. Oh. Um, I paired them up with um, this dude in Austria that used to make the best portable ramps, but his ramps were really cumbersome, but they were the best design. Okay. So I flew him to where they were in Pennsylvania, and I said, like, you guys figure out how to make a ramp. And a few months later, I flew there. They're like, I think we got it. I think we got it. I went there, and they had the ramp set up, and it was perfect. It still is. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, my ramp is now 16 years old. And you've moved it around Still quite the best a bit. vert ramp, yeah. Seriously? We can put that thing up. We can put the entire ramp up in two hours. Wow. That's incredible. From nothing, yeah. Dang. It's like a big Lego set. Wow. Yeah, you get what you pay for. <laughs> it's expensive. It's expensive, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. How was then, the old uh, Powell Peralta mini ramp that folded down? How was that? I heard it had a, a pretty bad kink in it. You know, back then, like... It's funny, because we, we used to... Everything was terrible back then, right? Yeah. You know, Del Mar was terrible like upland was deadly and we just had to figure out how to skate them and yeah. it made us all better skaters and more versatile in the end but yeah the 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 pal ramp had a little kink in it but like we, we thought it was the greatest thing ever right hmm. there was nothing to compare it to yeah, like that's, that's the thing we weren't world. spoiled yeah. the, the irony of having a ramp like mine is that I suck everywhere else now on vert oh. like trying to skate a vert ramp that's less than perfect is a struggle right and um, and it's because my ramp, I take it for granted. But every wall is the same. It's always it's always going to be fast. It's always good. And uh, we could relate though on the skate park side of it. We skate absolutely. these perfect skate yep. spots. I mean skate parks, and we go out in the street and and we're mad at a little crack. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. like yeah. This, get the bond now. Yeah. yeah, this isn't perfect. Well, ah. it's like it's like uh, Riley, you know, Shep Dog's crew. They grew up skating Carlsbad Skate Park. Yeah. Carlsbad <laughs> Skate Park is <laughs> terrible. <Yeah. laughs> It's terrible, but they learned how to skate it. And see, Tony, they, you should make horrible skate parks, and then the streets, that's the street it. skate community would be yeah. better. <laughs> yes, right, yeah. yes, that's a new, uh, that's a new twist in the Tony Hawk Foundation. Yeah. Horrible. Just, skate just a big plaque. This park is going to make you a better <laughs> skater elsewhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Enjoy. <laughs> you were just talking about Powell and stuff, and um, how long were you on Powell for exactly? Um, Powell Peralta. Tw- uh, Twelve years. Twelve years, years. Yeah. and you turned pro for them, right? 
Yes. Yeah. And you, but you skated for Dogtown before. Was that your first sponsor? My first sponsor was Dogtown. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you left them to go to Powell. I didn't necessarily leave them. They kind of went out of business. <laughs> gotcha. So, <laughs> okay. okay. And I found that out because Stacey Peralta called my house. Seriously. <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> yeah. He said, Dogtown's out of business. Come over here with us. Pretty much. Um, oh. well, the way the whole thing unfolded was, uh, the Dogtown team, which at the time was basically Mike Smith, okay. um, came to Oasis and uh, their team manager, Denise Downs Barter, who, I mean, that was pretty much all of Dogtown at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, uh, yeah. you know, I was skating with him and, and they needed a place to stay for the Oasis contest. And okay. So my dad, he just was always like, yeah, you stayed around, sure, whatever. So they ended up staying in my house. I got to know them and Mike. And they saw me skate and they just thought my, you know, I had these like quirky little tricks and some hard stuff. And, and they, and Mike gave me his board. Oh yeah. So that was my way of being sponsored was <laughs> I had Mike Smith's old board. You got a free, got a free board. Yeah. But then yeah. they said, Hey, well, you know, we can start sending you boards. We actually make our boards in San Diego. You could just go pick them up at the wood manufacturer, wow. Taylor Dykema. So my dad would drive me down there every month or so mm -hmm. to get a new skateboard. And then, um, and then like we would go down there and, the boards wouldn't be screened and I just felt like there was something off. And then, and then we sort of didn't weren't invited to go down there anymore. And so I didn't really know what was happening. And, and, uh, I didn't care really. Like I, you know, a little it, kid, right? I was a little kid years and, old. Or yeah. Something, yeah. And the, like the, the end goal wasn't to be sponsored. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, it, like there mm -hmm. was just no, there was no future that anyone could think was real yeah. in skateboarding at the time. So it was just kind of like, oh, well, and then Stacy called me and he's like, hey, I heard Dogtown went to business. I'm like, oh, that's why I'm not getting uh, skateboards. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. He had actually spoken to me before that, um, not long before that, but at a, I remember at an Upland contest, Stacy came up to me and he's like, hey, how's, how's Dogtown treating you? I was like, good. Yeah. What do you, I get skateboards. They, I don't know. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, you literally were probably, what, 12 at the time or something, right? 12, I was, 13. yeah. Tw uh, 11 probably 11, 11 12, yeah okay because then you got on to Powell and you like turned pro in a couple years yeah not long I think I think getting on Powell just gave me a, a boost of confidence mm. that that was reflected in my skating okay suddenly I just started learning all kinds of new tricks I made it an effort to learn to skate other things besides Delmar um, you know, just to, because you had to, you had to, you had to compete. You had to, like, yeah. that was it. That was yeah. how you were judged. Like you, you were only rated by your competition rankings. Right. <laughs> yeah. No one was making videos. No. You know, you weren't getting sequences in the magazine unless you were at the contest and unless you did good in the contest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I made it a point to just try to get better at, at the, you know, other, other bowls and, and stuff like that. And then, uh, I, I went through, I reached the top of the amateur ranks pretty quickly, okay. like within a couple of years. And then a couple of people that I, my peers were starting to turn pro guys like Neil Blender and mm -hmm. Lester Kasai. And, and they, they went pro the contest before I did. And then it felt like, well, if I'm not going pro now, I'm just cruising. Yeah. yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? Like he's right. still amateur. Like he was already winning the amateur events and the dudes that weren't winning are going are pro. Going pro. Yeah. 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 Like Grosso. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and so it was at a Whittier contest where, you know, it was pretty, it was unspoken. It's pretty much like, come on, are you going to go pro or not? And so I was filling out the entry form and that's pretty much how you went pro at the time. I didn't check the amateur box. I checked the pro box. You did it yourself pretty much. Yeah. Well, Start no one's pro. offering you a contract, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you skated for Powell already, right? You I were skated for it. Powell, but, but Stacy did leave it up to me. He's like, I said, you know, what should I do? And he's like, it's up to you, man, whatever, you know, what you, what you're comfortable with. And so then I'll never forget. He was sort of next to me. And so I just checked the pro box. I was like, how's that? Did you give like, him an elbow? Like, mm, he's like all right. That? Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> sure. Go win that contest, then, kid. That's yeah, awesome. I think I got fourth at the event. Okay. So I felt Pretty good. Yeah. About my debut. Yeah. I should, I should, I should have used that when I was AM. I should have checked the, not checked the box. <laughs> yeah. No one's surprising you with your pro model. Yeah. All right. Let's put it that way. <laughs> There's no champagne. <laughs> and then what happened? You just like, and so basically you, you, you moved up a rank, mm -hmm. you know, you moved up to the pro category. Yeah. First place was 150 bucks. <laughs> Second place was a hundred. Third mm -hmm. place was 50. 150 I mean, bucks. 150 bucks. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like at some point, I never, I'll never forget. I watched my bank account grow to six hundred dollars, oh. and I was like, I can buy my own moped scooter. <laughs> like, I went to Honda and bought a new 
what you know they called it a moped but it was actually just a scooter and just I, a little and bit. I, yeah, yeah 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 and i was only 15 but it was my way to get to the skate park on my own oh. you, you know like, the, the pedals on it well, it didn't. Have, it was like right when the, it sort of transitioned from that. Right. I thought I was going to get one with pedals on it, but they had a newer one. They're like, this one you don't have to pedal. I was like, awesome. Great. <laughs> you yeah. can't drive though at 15. Honda Express. I, I, I pretended not to know that. Okay. <laughs> did you get that? And then eventually over? got pulled over. You did. Yeah. And then, because I, I was 15, I looked like I was 12. So okay. I was already marked. And then I was waiting at the stoplight, and this cop, I'll never forget, drove by, was like, turned around. He's like, <laughs> how old are you? said 15 he's like you know enough to drive i was like that's not what the honda guy told me no <laughs> seriously but you pinned it on him yeah pinned it on the honda guy yeah. so i had to walk it home oh man oh, that's funny. Uh, how much longer after did you turn 16 you could finally drive uh, like six months oh they, okay yeah and right. they put me i think I, I did have to go to court with my mom and they put me on like this probation oh. you can't give you can't be seen on your scooter again for the next three months I was like don't worry about it man <laughs> yeah. but that's amazing though at that at that young age to buy your own scooter you know a lot of kids back then big, they're mowing hey, lawns are you kidding me? they're like, doing this they're taking the trash it was out. a big deal yeah, yeah. and then my first car uh i bought my i bought a 77 honda civic for 1500 bucks scooter to car yeah yeah living the dream man <laughs> now you could buy anything you want tony <laughs> <laughs> you know? it is it is still very strange to be paid for doing this <laughs> yeah, i'm not a, kidding like that that is something that's never <laughs> lost on me like to to i would do this for free any day yeah and now i get paid more money than i would have ever dreamed you want to invest in the nightclub <laughs> we could absolutely couple, we could use a couple bucks over here you know all right you guys are on your hundred show so i know working we barely Nothing. raj had to he ran out of party city with those balloons didn't yeah. even pay for them yeah. that's how broke we are oh, okay yeah. now he's uh, pay 30 bucks running down running down pico with a uh, hundred balloons yeah. <laughs> all right well hit me up send me your deck no it must feel good send me your though, investment deck you've been i mean like i was saying before tvs movies stunt doubles game shows Video games. Video games. <laughs> were you it, like your first time acting? Were you like nervous? Like this is just I don't know if I can pull this off. Uh, or... That would have been Gleaming the Cube. Okay. Yeah. Um, I remember Stacy wanted us all to try out for parts because he knew he was going to get the stunt like coordinator. The stunt coordinator. Mm -hmm. And camera crew, like he knew that was a lock, but he really wanted us to be maybe main characters. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so we all had to go try out. And, uh, and I remember it pretty vividly because he was like, you guys have to stand out. Like, you've got to just be, right, you know. You got to kill it. Were you like, I'm gonna not not even kill it, but just just be loud, be abrasive. Like, oh, wow. you know, bring stickers, sticker up the, the, the waiting room. Like, they got to remember you guys. And we were just like, oh. what were you talking about? And, and um, Tommy and I got parts. So yeah, kind of worked. There you go. Yeah. Was that, it was that like, uh, different than your demeanor at the time to like act like, like that, like stickering up the place. Cause, uh, for me it was like, yeah, you know, Lance was a bit of a hooligan already. Okay. So, and, okay. and Tommy kind of, so, you yeah. know, they were used to that, but I was kind of like, Oh, okay. I guess we're going to be troublemakers and <laughs> to get noticed. I didn't know that's how it works in Hollywood. I don't know if it actually does, but, right. um, but whatever, you know, I think, I think it was just cause we were so unique and we acted well enough that they didn't have to hire another actor, another stunt double. Yeah. I, you know, I think it was probably just, <laughs> I, I want to, I want to think that it was my acting ability, but I think it was just more their economics of the movie. Yeah, right. There's all the experience on uh, animal chin. Oh, it's the animal chin was <laughs> like, we were dreading acting. You were dreading it. Yeah. Cause yeah. we were just like, what, why? Okay. <laughs> Why wouldn't this is not what we signed up for? This is not what you know. We want to skate, and then when Stacy was like, "Well, we need this. We need we need to get from one place to the next in this movie, and we need a, st a thread to do that. And this is the thread, and you mm. guys got to do it." But we were at some point there was sort of a. <laughs> it got tense. Tommy was saying that like when you guys were doing the uh, the the bedroom scene where you guys were all yeah doing the comb your hair and all that stuff. He's like, "I'm not doing this." <laughs> yeah, and then Cab uh, he revolted when they were doing the Jim Bram scene at the party. Um, it, cause Stacey had the camera under the ramp. He's like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. The newspaper angle. Yeah. Right. And then they had it like, it was sort of an impasse. And at some point, at some point we were just being brats. Yeah. But you know, we were yeah. just spoiled and, and we were like, we're not, why are we got to, you know, we, we shot the whole thing in three weeks or something. Mm -hmm. And you know, we were going mm -hmm. for these next and we were just like, and, 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 and at one point Stacey kind of, he just sort of left. Okay. We were at Boris at Bakersfield. Oh, seriously. Yeah. He took off, took off. <laughs> Left you there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he, sh I, he should have. Okay. The way we were acting, like the way we were be being prima donnas and complaining about everything. And then, right. and then one day, and then one, we just looked around like, where, where's Stacey go? 
he's gone gone he's gone and so we just like screwed around the rest of the day and the <laughs> next, the next morning we were back at it oh like, he came back he came back okay. Yeah. okay yeah i thought maybe you had to take an uber home or something <laughs> <laughs> uber yeah. yeah but i just I, i'm always fascinating with like a skateboarder than turning like actor or whatever Turn, yeah they, i never i never got into actor, well, but doing acting roles yeah i should say you know I, because I, uh you're very good at it. Well, you know, I think I, I never. Bagel okay, bites. For, for, <laughs> it's like a whole. See, but that's not. I was just like ha, <laughs> being me. Well, playing me, but trying to. But it's still there's cameras yeah, on um, you, and you, yes. there's a, there's. A, you have an to. You have to start pressure. to get comfortable with it. Yeah. Yes, you do yeah. for sure. Um, but I never got into skateboarding as a springboard that, to right. acting. No, but yeah. I mean, it's a, but it's but it fell into your lap, right? So yeah, and, and for to... a minute, you know, I'd say through the two thousands when things were crazy and there was, you know, suddenly it was like, wait, you're a celebrity for skateboarding. Mm. I, I thought I had to fit that role, and I kind of chased it for a while. It was like, Ooh. oh, you get a red carpet, and you go to this and this event, and you got to go to you know, go to this charity event and con, and and it was yeah. like, and I did it for a while, and I was like. I don't want to hang out with these people. Okay. <laughs> you know, in some ways, like just because they're famous doesn't make them fun or cool. Like, yeah. And uh, there, you, it was, it was kind of a. It, I came to that realization maybe a little too late, like at, at the cost of going and, and mm. you know, uh, not spending time with my kids, and you know, just kind of suddenly I thought, oh, this is where I am. This, this is where I'm, this is what I'm supposed to do yeah. at this level, and. Um, and it was it sucked like it was you know i, yeah. I it's not yep. that i have regret i learned a lot from it i'm glad i oh, came sure. to the fire and yeah. came back to doing what i love but for sure there was a, there was a moment there where i was caught in the hype and and thought that that's this is my life now that's it yeah uh well speaking of famous people like you were hanging out with tom green it seemed like a bunch Kelly, of like point. loves <laughs> yeah. like, i love tom insane. green dude, yeah. dude, that dude yeah. is one of my favorites and i was just yeah. like that's so cool you get you gave him a board on birdhouse right i did yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. <laughs> but he grew up skating so we had yeah. the same kind of mentality and mm -hmm. mindset and, mm -hmm. and you know we actually um uh my wife who's actually here was the first one to tell me about tom green actually and, oh yeah um I don't remember how I connected with him first. I think I sent an email to just his homies. Interesting. Because I knew one of his homies was on email. And at the time, not a lot of people were. Okay. And he's like, oh man, Tom would love to meet you. He's in New York right now. I was like, I'm going to be in New York next week. He's like, here's his number. Call him up. And then we just went and caused a bunch of chaos. <laughs> no <in> Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. For his show. That was the yeah. first time I was on a yeah, show. Yeah, and, yeah. and actually a couple of the skits we did couldn't air. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. it was so disruptive. Like we went to this Chinese restaurant and we were... I followed him, but we were swimming under the tables <laughs> on our skateboards, like through the That's whole amazing. restaurant. Yeah. You know, and, like and people are just like, what the hell? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what is there, just a camera guy there just following you or like, yeah, how just does one just... camera, you know, just renegade. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was pre jackass, but it was definitely in that but realm. But we're thinking, yeah. like, this is crazy. A what little bit, doing? but I had seen his show, so I was yeah, like, this, this is, is it. Here does. was Tom. <laughs> right. You got you to gotta join in, right? You think, like, I'm going to get arrested right now. This a little bit, like, yeah. yeah. And then uh, and then the, the people wouldn't sign a release, They're obviously. Oh, that's what it comes down to. You guys just ruined our lunchtime. Is that, that? but that's kind of like, early early 2000s is that's kind of when you kind of got thrust into this like celebrity yes uh yeah face and you can get caught like you can totally get caught up in it where it, I, and, I can and imagine you you start to believe the hype and then it's like and 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 you can lose your like you can lose yourself and and what got you there yeah i, I, I don't I mean there was it. a time for sure where i was like not skating that much because i was just going from one event to the next yeah. and i'm doing the interviews and doing this and it was like all I do is talk about skating. I should probably skate. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Riding that 900 wave. Yeah. That, you know, and, and that's the, another thing. Like even, even back then I wanted to, I, I really wanted to be known more for my, I, I, I don't know, hopefully for a richer history than just one trick. Of course. Yeah. Right. You know, and, right. and obviously, you know, we come back to that, but, but there's all these, whatever, all, all these ridiculous, um, <laughs> rumors and and takes on it and there was like this big master plan and then i released a video game like we were working on a video game for almost three years prior to that yeah in fact when i did whatever when i finally did make a 900 mm -hmm. i'll never forget that just a couple days later i emailed neversoft because we were on, we were on the final beta version of the game like you, it was it was being submitted to sony mm -hmm. you know you cannot change it once that happens like you you send it to the to the console people that's it that's you're locked into that right. version and they were about to send it, and I was like, I was like, hey, do you think you could put the 900 as a trick in there? And I'll never forget, um, uh, 
Joel, who was the head of Neversoft, sent me reply just like, already on it, you fucking rule. Because <laughs> that kind of would have been a bad move if that game didn't if that game came out without the 900 well not a bad move but you know what i'm saying though well, it, 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 it kind of needed to be after you know once we we knew well, we didn't know at the time but when we got into the sequel we could have put it in there but for yeah, sure that was still like you had done it the game's coming out like what the yeah, 900's not in here yeah, yeah and that you know <laughs> the, the whole conspiracy that somehow this is my master plan in life <laughs> is not even close to truth it was all a perfect storm and i feel very lucky I love that it that. happened yeah. you know what i mean, I mean. But, but i mean all that stuff was in the works and going right. to happen with or without me doing a trick how much you make off that tony hawk game what are we i will tell you huh? so game checks. <laughs> all right i'll tell you this um when the fourth game was released mm -hmm. this is just i i'm, I'm not gonna like i don't want to go into great I, detail of this saying, but i, I, I will tell you we'll give you this okay when the fourth game was released mm -hmm. my main contact at activision asked to have lunch with me in la when i was there Ooh, one day and he's like sign. he's like yeah he's not the head but he was definitely the guy overseeing our games okay um and he's like I, here's what's happening we're releasing the fourth game the the last three are still in the top 10 of sales. One is going into, I forgot what they call it. It's like, it's like uh, classics mode, which means they sell at a certain price, but way more volume. Oh. He's like, so things are way bigger than you ever thought. And he handed me, <laughs> he handed me a check for $4 million. Oh, that happened. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, was that was just crazy. for me to do that day. Well, it was, it was my, my, you know, whatever it was, I don't remember annual royalty or whatever it was, but I was just like, what? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do with that? Do you I, can tell, I could tell when he was saying it, it was like, leading up to something. This is big. Like yeah. this is bigger than you imagine. And I was like, cool. I might get a million dollars. Like that's <laughs> yeah, amazing. This yeah. might. And then he hands me, and then he just slides his check over and I was like, I got lunch. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. I got the, what do you, do you like run to bank of America and put in the ATM? Like, what do you do? Like, how do you, what do you uh, do with that? <laughs> like, um, how do you deposit? Yeah. Going? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think I immediately put in the ATM. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> I might have actually. Yeah. <laughs> I might've put it in the ATM. Cause I was always on the zero, go. I'm not zero, kidding. I was zero, always on the zero, go back then. Zero. So I was just like, all right, yeah, we deposit. got that. But no, I don't want to downplay that. That was, it, it was, it changed my life. Like the video game I, I, totally. changed my life, wow. changed wow. everything. My, my sense of awareness, my yes. opportunities. Um, it allowed me to stop competing and do things that I always dreamed mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. like the Huck Jam and stuff like that. Um, but uh, in that moment, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely overwhelming. I think I immediately put in, I'm pretty sure I put in about two or 300 grand into the foundation oh that's amazing yes because i was like all right because i can't you know what i mean yeah. I, i'm i'm walking the walk like i want this to i want a good portion of this to go to right. skate parks like i mm -hmm. felt very strongly about that and i wasn't doing it i never did it for press you know what i mean like yeah. all and especially with all those appearance and stuff you have here i am mm -hmm. trying to brag about it so <laughs> <laughs> take what you will with that but <laughs> um but i never you know i was never doing press like i never liked i, I just never liked trying to draw that kind of attention yeah, oh, it yeah. always felt forced to like if you mm. go visit Make-A-Wish kids and you have a camera tag along, like, no, that's, it means yeah. you're not really in the moment. Yeah. For sure. For and sure. you're not, you're not doing it for the, for the most healthy purposes. You're doing it because you were trying to get yeah. publicity the press. Yeah, right. the publicity, Absolutely. yeah. The best thing about our foundation is that we have literally concrete proof mm -hmm. of our work. Yeah, like there is. There, L L you donated money. Yeah. You donated yes. money. Here is a skate park. Yeah, go watch these kids skate. Well, if the opportunity ever comes up, we'd love to do a nine club uh, Tony Hawk Park. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, but what, like awesome. just a little while ago, you were asking me for funding for your show. <laughs> That's separate. And now I, <laughs> That's separate. <laughs> Does it just come full circle? I give you the money and you give it to the skate park. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that works. Yeah, Nin a little nine club. Uh, yeah, we could bring back the Venice graffiti pits, dude. Oh yeah, that would be tight. Get a yeah. shovel. Yeah. Is it, isn't it up right now? Like at that, that art exhibit? Uh, it's an uh, art. Yeah. yeah, it is an art exhibit. Beyond the streets. Though. It's yeah. not. Uh, yeah. How, I mean, wow. how crazy is that? Like that's how far skateboarding's come. Is that that little segment of the world yeah. that just was the dirty skaters? <laughs> oh yeah, in Venice. Oh yeah. yeah, where homeless guys were like shooting up and everything. Yeah, taking yeah, shits. But, yeah, but but it's this iconic place that was had genuine progressive skating happening. Yeah. 
is now an art exhibit. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how far we've come. It's, it's, crazy. it's amazing. It's totally. So cool. It's unbelievable. <laughs> like I still, I, it, stuff like that blows me away still to this day. Like, have you ever thought about that too? Like the, in the Tony Hawk foundation, maybe building like plazas, you know, like not, not necessarily like skate park vibe, but like more of like the graffiti pits or like the, there's a the few, art, the, there the are a few awesome. projects that we've definitely supported. Okay. You cool. Know? I mean, cool. among those, 588 or so yeah 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 yeah. yeah. there right. are a few that are more l along those lines okay, cool. and we're also working with there's a group the ralph seawood um foundation in uh michigan that's mm -hmm. kind of what they want to do is more oh, nice. sort of art spaces that are skatable yeah. so um but but like i said i i can't take the credit for that like mm. the the crew that we have at the mm -hmm. foundation is is a well-oiled machine and i just have to shake hands and kiss babies i love it though man i show mean up, that, that, show up with the ribbon cuttings like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah do you carry those big scissors with you on the plane or do you i've, uh, I've you only done that a couple scissors. times i've, I've actually day. only done that a couple times because <laughs> <laughs> i don't and but, i know that like and even even our foundation like we know that we've empowered someone else to do a lot of the groundwork mm -hmm. so we don't like taking credit for that and and i yeah, think that's that amazing our, our model of how we do skate parks is 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 that where we're not just going, all right, here's a small town like Fargo, North Dakota, they need a skate park. We're gonna come in and build a skate park and we get the glory. We wanna we want the communities to have a sense of pride and ownership in the project that that they helped to create. Yes. That they were having fundraisers for, that they were petitioning for and going to city council meetings. We just you know, we just give them the tools to make that happen. You just help yeah. facilitate the the yeah. build and the, Because otherwise it like happen. they won't even they won't even take care of the place. If, that's true. If it's just given to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Right. So, that's our model. Love it. That's not, that's my pitch. Yeah. <laughs> so now I, I want the money. Now I want the money to build the nine <laughs> skate park. But did, I mean, Tony Hawk's pro skater and all that stuff. You guys did like what eighteen or something? Like it's <laughs> yeah. across all the platforms. I mean, imagine yes, you know four million. Uh, must have made a lot of money. <laughs> yes. But, yes. You know, um, I was very surprised too, Tony. You didn't ask me to be a character in any of them. You know, I was, I was very. Uh, I think it was a little. It was. You were, were still amateur. Cool. They only had pros. Yeah. There. Yeah. They only had pros. That must have been it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It got but, it got tricky. Um, <laughs> it got but, tricky to to reinvent the wheel every time too. You know, and then once EA Skate came out and it was a whole different control scheme. Right. That split the market. Totally. And then, you know, we both had a good run, but I think both companies were like, we're, we're fighting, we're, we're fighting for a smaller piece of the pie and it's just not, yeah. I mean, that's why, that's why it's not happening. I don't anymore. know uh, because like, I feel like nowadays too, like people want EA skate back. They want these back. Like, I feel like there is like something, you know, like you could there maybe is, do yeah. something for uh Twitch, do something for that. Uh, yeah. I'm actually, I'm, another... well, I'm working, I'm working with, um, with a phone app developer on phone something. apps are great oh, wow they're great but yeah. i mean like the the, the video no i know what you're saying are... but i'm just saying like the, I'm, I'm pretty excited because That's i feel amazing. like this one is on the right track okay yeah and i'm in so um but i can't exactly say what it is yet so okay yeah you'll know when it happens i'll, I'll, well, I'll know I'll be, when you... I'll, put, <laughs> I'll be promoting it yeah <laughs> okay sure, well i'll, I'll know good, when yeah. you ask me to be a character yeah, yeah. But I, know would, yeah I mean i would love to do another console game you know it's yeah. just that it, my, my contract ran out with activision mm -hmm. and so they can't make a tony Hawk's pro skater gotcha. Gotcha. i can't go with someone else to make a tony Hawk's oh, pro skater oh right um, and they have no they have, they have no uh they don't want to do one i feel like there's a the market moment, right now you know it's video games are so tricky like it the the market got so diluted yeah it's true and it just became shoot 'em ups mm -hmm, yep. mm -hmm. and first person For, shooters Fortnite. <laughs> first person shooters Fortnite, um <laughs> call of duty yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. you know and then and then that was it that was that was the monster and, and it was like right unless you're madden you're not no sports games are really gonna infiltrate that what were your thoughts on uh Danny way his last trick on risk it where he almost pulled the 900 oh i was pumped yeah <laughs> because he showed it was possible yeah like mm -hmm. every when when I saw that what was that that was 1989 when I saw Danny do I mean Danny did you ever deserve, hear rumors Danny deserves the credit for 900 like to to show that it was possible mm -hmm. absolutely um, yeah I had heard he was trying it it wasn't <laughs> that's the weird thing back then it, it wasn't a big race or a big effort yeah there were only really it was just he and I and like I think I saw Bill Weiss like flail one one time or something <laughs> did he have his clothes on yeah he did oh yeah. yes okay who else i like sluggo was but 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 89 
it was Danny. Yeah. You know, okay. like I, I tried it a couple of times, but Danny was really trying it and mm-hmm. really spinning it. And he put it on the wall. And, and I remember seeing like, oh, it, it really is possible. Because every time I was trying to before then, I was sort of like not really holding on my board and landing backwards, but and not seeing the landing zone. Mm-hmm. And then when I saw him, I was like, oh, it, it, it can be done. Yeah. You know? And, and uh, you know, all that all that hoopla that somehow you could watch someone do a, look at a sequence of someone and learn. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you watch the sequence of someone skating and go learn that trick. Like that, that is not how it works in yeah, our world. No, yeah. No, no, no. But I also think yeah. that's, that's how the universe works too. You put something in the air and uh, sure. somebody's going to grab, grab it, yeah, whether it's yeah, a yeah. product yeah. or a trick or whatever it is, yeah. you know, like, Oh, I thought, of, I thought of that two years ago. Well, yeah, yeah. you put it in the air, man. I Somebody really, I, I mean, all that, whatever when, when finally it was the only handful of us trying nines mm-hmm. i thought sluggo was the guy to do thought it he was gonna do it yeah because sluggo had the gymnastic That's background exactly. yeah. he knew how to he knew how to see the landing mm. and when you see him try you're like he's gonna do it yeah when you were trying it did you have like a buddy trying it with you at all no not really no no so you couldn't like learn from one another yeah yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't even no there was no collective <laughs> There, there was no collective knowledge. Everyone yeah. had their own technique. You know what I mean? And we weren't, we weren't learning from each other yeah. necessarily. It was more like you're on your own. You're going to get broken off. Yeah. You're going to make it. Yeah. going to break some ribs. <laughs> I remember that day I broke my, when I broke my rib, I had to pick up Riley from preschool that day. <laughs> oh yeah. And so I was in a time crunch to, to try to do it. Cause I was, I was getting close and I had, you know, someone shooting video. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I got to try to make it because I'm going to be late picking up Riley from school. Okay. <laughs> and Riley was, two, let's see, 90, he was three. Oh, wow. Jeez. It's true. <laughs> and then I slammed, I slammed and I broke a rib up here and it felt like my collarbone Ooh. and I couldn't go to the hospital or anything. I was going to be late. So yeah. I had to drive. Like I was, it was having a hard time breathing. So I was just like, God, I'm so jacked. That's like, dangerous, bro. You could have punctured yeah. a lung or something. I know. Something. I didn't. Yeah. Dude. It was 95. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there, were no, there were no athletic trainers yeah. at our ramp, like, waiting in the wings. It yeah. was just like, all right, go get out of here. <laughs> um, so then I picked up Riley, and, and I remember, like, having a hard time breathing that night, even. Oh. Um, and then I finally went and got x-rays, and they said, no, you, you broke a rib that's up here. It feels like your collarbone, but it's not. Oh. Um, and actually had a chiropractor, like, snap it back into place. Ooh. Ouch. Um, the sad part of that, I was that dad getting there last, picking up their kid. Oh, the last kid, like little Riley oh, sitting there on the, on the steps, <laughs> yeah. huh, waiting Listen. for his dad. <laughs> yeah. But that brings me to this. So I brought this to, Oh yes. What, I know I that. had a shirt from animal chin. Oh, so look at that. Riley, uh, a little sweater. <laughs> that tiny Riley thing. was born right when we started birdhouse. Okay. But I was still on pal when they knew I was going to have a child. Mm-hmm. Um, and they made me these look baby, at that. baby shirts. Baby hawks. That baby is baby hawk. Yeah. That's so this awesome. was actually Riley's when he was an infant. No way. <laughs> Kelly, that might almost fit you right now. I, so I he was yeah. absolutely forced into skating, as you can tell. I know, yeah, right? Sure. Was, yeah. That is, fu- that thing is tiny. That, oh, that could fit my <laughs> cat. Babies almost. are tiny. <laughs> babies are very fit, small. Uh, that could fit my cat, Larry. <laughs> But you can't have this. No, no, no. Okay. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't <laughs> did your other it, kids wear it as well? Or? No. No, no, no. no. Did they get passed on? No. 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 It did not get passed That's on. I can't believe I held on to it. That's amazing. I think they made a couple no. of them, but I thought this one was the coolest. And I love it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. A little and now he has his own signature gear, so yeah. he doesn't need my well, help. Yeah. Let's talk about that because. Oh, um, you mean. You mean uh, this? <laughs> well, yeah. Motorhead Riley he's, shoe? He's uh, he pulled off his uh, Lakai. Motorhead shoe. Motorhead collab. Yeah, yeah, Riley Hawk. Listen, man, I mean, well, first of all, having a son that skateboards, kind of following in your footsteps is kind of a, a, a rad thing. I think be, being a skateboarder and saying like, oh, when I have a kid, hopefully he'll skate and do all this stuff. I mean, when he first started skating, getting good, you must have been, you know, proud dad, you know? Oh, or, absolutely. It was, it was super fun. I, it felt... I don't know. I guess I didn't realize how lucky I was that he he really uh, took to it mm-hmm. because so many kids are just like you know he was he was inundated with it. Like, yes, and and we, when he was born, you know th- times were kind of tough, and and his mom and I weren't didn't have a lot of money, mm-hmm. and so if I had the chance to do a demo or something, I had to just take him because oh, we couldn't afford you. childcare. Yeah, yeah, so mm-hmm. I would take him to you know to do parking lot demos in St. Louis, and he was just there in the mix, and so he picked it up because. <laughs> Right. It was all around him. Yeah. Totally. You know? And that could easily have turned him off. And I think, I think in, in his early teens, he did shy away from it a bit because he felt that 
that scrutiny mm-hmm. and you know his kid like this classmates and stuff were just like oh it's Tony Hawk's kid I don't know you know and, and that's sure. when things started to blow up so he was like Ugh. so he started doing more motocross okay um, and then he started I don't know if he wants me to tell this whole story but uh, <laughs> then, then he started sort of getting serious about motocross but we didn't have the resources to, to help him with that mm-hmm. like we could I, I couldn't be at the track all day his mom couldn't be you know what I mean right. we, yeah. and he didn't have any homies that were really living the motocross life mm. but he started talking to me about getting sponsored and stuff oh, like wow. motocross and really going for it he wanted to, yeah, and and I had to have a conversation with like st- Riley. I know, like I know you're into it, and I know that you know that that it's a possibility, and I think you're pretty good, mm-hmm. but you're really good at skating. Oh, and, you know, like yeah. he was at thirteen or fourteen at the time. I was like you, you're like you're an exceptional skater, and I think if you want to have a life where you're getting sponsored or doing something like that. And, and eventually turning professional, I think skating is the avenue. And you know, you don't have to do it my way. You don't even have to like yeah. acknowledge that you're my son. But I think <laughs> yeah. that that is that's more of where your efforts could be focused because you're already ahead of the curve. Wow. You know, and I, and I don't know if that was the moment, but I feel like he took that to heart okay. and eventually started skating more. And all of his homies, like in, in school, yeah, that's the Shep Dogs, like those guys, and they're all. You know, they've all come through it successfully. Yeah, right. Um, Jacob, Kirby, you know, all those guys. So uh, so it was really fun to see him take off and to, and take it in his own way. Like, take, yeah. take his own path, create his own crew. Identity. Yeah. Identity, yeah. style of tricks. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I think I remember... <laughs> Around that time, I think he was like 15, I took him, we went on audio tour. Okay. Um, of the UK. I was on that one. You were, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but I remember that one of the first demos, um, Riley was skating and everyone was just kind of like, who's that, who's that little kid? And yeah. he, he was doing like really hard stuff. Yeah. And I remember Jeff Taylor looked at me and he's like, it's official, Riley's better than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, like it, it, the time has come. Yeah, he got a bunch of, I got a bunch of clips of him from that trip. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, uh, and that's when he started really shine but then but then it was it was when it was when andrew approached me and said hey i really would like to talk to you about getting riley on baker and mm-hmm. that's when i knew that he had come of age yeah and and recognized on his own abilities and not f- for any connection of mine right and if andrew's the one recognizing him that's big yeah yeah you know, right andrew Seriously. has a true eye for talent and and um, totally unique skating and progressive skating and so i was like yeah isn't that weird Bef- to, you're the one that kind of helped andrew come up and then andrew yeah, it was, it became full <laughs> circle. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, oh, yeah. There's, there's all kinds of incestuous <laughs> things like I now bet. now birdhouse is distributed by baker boys yes so yes that's awesome. birdhouse started baker, baker. right <laughs> right yeah. in under our umbrella of our distribution it's so amazing. then it went this way and and i'm really proud i mean and i'm glad that you know i'm, I'm glad that that andrew uh, thinks of me like that. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not just, I'm not just a stepping stone. Like mm-hmm. he, mm-hmm. he was like, I still think Birdhouse is sick and yeah. you know, I'd love to still be working with you and that's amazing. We needed distribution. So, well, you guys we have yeah. a pretty heavy team. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I'm oh, really yeah. proud. Well, you know that, that's what, um, about 10 years ago, a little less is when I took over Birdhouse m- on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I was partnered with pair and then I, you know, said, you keep the distribution. I want to take Birdhouse and, you know, give him money. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, that was when I decided I need to make Birdhouse, <laughs> make Birdhouse great again. I need to, <laughs> I need to really step it up with the team and the effort yep. because that had been lacking. And do you think with all the things you had going on, kind of, did you ever take a step back from birdhouse and maybe you you did? Absolutely. Yes. And and I was, I was as much to blame as anyone Mm -hmm. that, that Mm -hmm. I wasn't prioritizing it. Yeah. I was taken for granted and the team was just sort of a, you know, it was, it was ragtag crew and Mm. no one was really outshining or, yeah. Or a guy like Jaws, you know, oh, was, yeah. we didn't, we didn't have that element. Mm-hmm. And so I proactively started reaching out to the people that I thought would, you know, be the ones to, to really bring Birdhouse back into the limelight, but also represent it well and yeah. have a, you know, well-rounded team. And, and I, I made it my mission and, you know, it took a while for sure, but yeah. fast forward 10 years, we're at three King of the Roads Crazy. and, you know, and, and our team is like, it's my second family. It really is like that, that whole crew. I love them so much. And we, as soon as we all get together, like we're right back where we left off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's a good, and sign. it's a blast. Yeah. That's yeah. a good sign. Yeah. yeah. 
That's amazing, man. You guys are, you guys are, yeah. Th- uh, you won, did you win three King of the Roads in a row? Yeah. You won? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a hard one to win. You yeah, guys yeah. really have. It's a lot of butt chugging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, between, you know, Jaws being gross, yeah. <laughs> Clint being devoted to every aspect of it. Okay. Yeah. You know, and I mean, Mike Davis, rest in peace. Oh, like yeah. he, he came up with he, the technical challenges that they would have were like, that's not possible. And like, Michael did it. Yeah. Wow. You know, wow. he was phenomenal. Man. I miss him so much. So yeah. sad. Mm-hmm. So sad. Whenever we lose a skateboarder, it's uh Well, of course. But, you know, like I said, like our, our crew is like a family and yeah, it's yeah. crushing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. But yeah, I mean, going back to also like Riley and everything, uh, what wasn't it like... I mean, before that conversation with Andrew Reynolds, did you, were you maybe thinking like, oh, he's going to get on Birdhouse. He's going to do this. He's going to be great. Like, we're yeah, going to have the same I mean, team. The, well, like, he was the, on Birdhouse. He was on Birdhouse. Uh, um, the nepotism of having him on Birdhouse and, and having him be pro on Birdhouse. Mm-hmm. I, Two I was with a hawk name on it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's something there that, that is you know, it's, there's a legacy there that, that would be cool, mm-hmm. but I always knew that he had to break out on his own. Yeah. I just knew it. And, and, and in terms of the public perception of, of his skill level, if mm-hmm. he was only ever on birdhouse, there would always be that, you know, those grumblings that like, oh, he's only there because his dad and whatnot. Yeah. So, so he needed to break out and, and Andrew was the perfect fit. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Really? He, and, I mean, you know, and, and Rowan was there and it was like, his mm-hmm. crew was kind of already there. And, yeah. So, cause I mean, at the end of the day, you're like the face of skateboarding. You know what I mean? Like, does, do you ever trip out on that? Like, listen, we're all skateboarders and, and guess what? Guess what? We're out in public. Oh, you skateboard. Oh, Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk. <laughs> yeah. Like that's all, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, does it ever like, are you ever like, this is, it this was is crazy. It, yes, I, I am. Absolutely. I think that I've, I, it, you know, it was not something I ever set out for. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to be the ambassador or the right. face or the or the one raising awareness um, or the main advocate for skating. Mm-hmm. But I was never adverse to that. Mm-hmm. I was happy to explain all the benefits skating had for me as a kid. I mean, it, it taught me like a sense of self confidence that I never had doing mm-hmm. anything else. Uh, a sense of identity, a, you know, a, an individuality and artistic expression, like all these things were so hugely important to my formative years and, and really did like, you know, I was, I was a super skinny nerd. Like yeah. I got, you know, in my day we got picked on. Okay. Like today it's bullying. Yeah. But you know what I mean? And skating was my way out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and skating was my way to really express myself. And so, to be able to explain that and, you know, maybe in, in a more philosophical way or in a way that people understand, and maybe just because of my recognition factor, I can explain that to people who have never had known that or been interested in it, then I'm happy to do so. Yeah. Um, and, and that's pretty much the extent of it. And, you know, and, and if you can, if you can say those things in, in some sense of eloquence, yeah. people listen for sure. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, but it is weird. Yeah, for sure. Like, and, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a 50 year old vert skater. <laughs> I can't represent all of skating. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not representing the kids down in the courthouse doing w- switch sure. flips. Like, right, right. and I don't pretend to, but I, but I can give you a sense of why they do it Thanks. and what it does for them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And what a skate park could do for the community of yeah. them. So, right. um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm honored to do so, you know, and I hope, and that's what I tried to do with the video game. Like, like the, the authenticity of the video game was so po- important to me. Um, you but know, it, people can, they can dig down like, well, all that stuff, you know, zero gravity and yeah. quadruple flips. Yeah, whatever. But, but we, we created a baseline for people to understand what skating is right. yeah. and the aesthetics of it, the, the tricks, mm-hmm. the difficulty of it, the characters. You know, I'm really proud of, of how that translated to the mainstream. Oh um, yeah, you dude, should be. You wear like certain outfits that had like yeah, certain brands you could rep. It was so cool, dude. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. And, and that was all you know. That that was all in hopes that we're representing skateboarding as a whole. Like that, the goal for the video game for me was to make a game that would inspire skaters to go buy a PlayStation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never thought that people who are really into games are gonna go straight to a skateboard because skateboarding wasn't that popular. Yeah. So, um, it. You know, it was bigger than I ever imagined. The fact that we got it to a sequel was, <laughs> yeah, 
was a huge shock to me. Wow. How, how about, uh, did you have any idea or like work with getting the music involved with that game? Yeah. Um, well, they, they just told me, you know, what's your wish list of music? And so my contribution to that was really bringing in the old punk that was identified. That was a soundtrack to skate parks when I was a kid. Oh, okay. That's, that was my contribution. I can't take credit for like, Mill and Colin or Goldfinger or any of that stuff like that was more them trying to reach out to sort of newer acts that were more punk sounding mm. okay. and do that so with that I feel like with that blend we, we, we got the right balance for mm -hmm. sure totally, but, yeah. but um, with each sequel uh, I tried to give more and more input like well I think you know like let's get Joy Division in there like yeah, you know yeah, really, yeah, we could go yeah. dig deeper and deeper and at some point it got to be where bands were begging to be on it oh. <laughs> and you didn't have to worry about just just paying a lot yeah. right you know paying a lot of licensing because people were just hyped to be in it so oh, wow. um, yeah I mean at one point you know to, to have like Devo and Nine Inch Nails and X and like That's that was great. all insane to me <laughs> and all your favorite bands it's all growing up you know and dick kennedy is like you know people ask me often like well, what's your favorite track or like in the beginning i was like we had dead kennedy's on the first soundtrack like that's insane yeah. to me yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. you it's know so that cool. was my soundtrack growing up crazy did so, you want to say something i saw i was you. just gonna say like um like Caesar's the other day on the experience episode mm -hmm. said like um you got because of your, your video game. You got a lot of like inner city kids, like ghetto kids, like into skateboarding. Yeah, I mean yeah. that was an unexpected. Well, I yeah. always hoped that it would inspire people to start skating, but mm -hmm. but that was definitely a silver lining in, in all ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, that it inspired anyone to skate, but especially kids that feel disenfranchised or that had no access to skating. Yeah, yeah. you know for sure. And um, he said it made it cool for them to skate. Like yeah. people were accepted. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. I've actually yeah. heard a few people. You yeah. know, they come up that that they before that would get teased like, "Why are you doing that white boy stuff?" You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. pretend to know their experience, but for sure they said that that changed the. The perception of it. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, gosh, you've done so much. I mean, you know, Pre President Obama invited you to the White House. You skated <laughs> yeah. in the in the I halls, yes. right? Yes. First <laughs> person ever skateboard in the halls of the uh, the White House. Uh, well, Andy McDonald told me he did set his skateboard down because he got to introduce Bill Clinton for something. Oh. So, and well, I have to, I have he, to say that as a disclaimer, because he definitely made it known to well, me he, once I got back he didn't, he didn't, <laughs> that he had done that. Well, he didn't like, go for right. a ride, though. He just put it down. I don't know. Right? I, yes, I think so. But but I'll tell you what, the story of of me doing that was that I got invited to the White House for a Father's Day event. Okay, yeah. They, they were going to have a bunch of people that were recognizable as athletes or as community people. Mm -hmm. And were fathers okay and they were trying to raise awareness just more like getting fathers engaged and Did getting you bring your kids? involved no no one brought their kids it was just more like and, and then and then once we got to the white house we fanned out to different projects around dc oh cool to go talk to different um charities and communities mm -hmm. about the importance of, of being a present father i mean that well that was the goal of it mm -hmm. all okay but when i was in the white house I'm not going to be at the White House without my skateboard. Right. Everywhere <laughs> yeah, I go, yeah. they're like, where's your skateboard? So right. I'm like, I'm not going to be stuck at the White House. Yeah, so like I go ID there almost. and I'm carrying the, my skateboard through the hall and, and you know, they have, you have a escort guide with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I just set my skateboard down. If like, I was like, would you shoot a photo of me? He's like, yeah, but you can't say that I'm shot this photo. <laughs> you know, there's just no way. And okay. then, and then, uh, so I stood on, I stood on my board and yeah. shot a photo and then he's like, all right, let's, let's not do that. So then later on, I was walking with another group and another bunch of dudes that were like pro basketball players and stuff like oh, that. Okay. And so we were walking together and I was like, hey, you guys, here's my, here's my phone. Take a photo of me. And I just skated down the hall and they shot the photo. And then I put that on social media and the backlash was swift. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Really? Because all these, I, I mean, it was more well, just conservative saying like, you're desecrating the halls. Like you're disrespecting whoa. the people's house. And I was like, I'm rolling urethane wheels across the tile. Yeah. <laughs> it's no and different than a roller I got bag. invited here because I'm a skateboarder. What do you expect? Like, do you, I, how do you deal with back? Because you've gotten backlash before, well, too. When you were, uh, you skated with, uh, I forget which son it was or something in the park. Oh, my daughter. And, uh, yeah, oh, your yeah, daughter. Yeah. And uh, it was, people were going yeah. crazy. Well, that's what happens when you, I mean, hey, if you, you, you if you're going to play the game, like if you're on yeah. social media, you got to be ready for that that's stuff. True. And, that's true. That's um, true. And so... 
but you know, I didn't fight it really. And I, I still like, I, if I went to the white house again, I, I'm not going to do not going now, but yeah, okay. um, if I went, you know, if I had it again to do it to over, do it I would, I would do it for sure. Cause right. it was I think awesome. any, anybody, anyone, sure, anyone yeah. of us would and, to and, get that opportunity. You know, and, and just in terms of the damage done or whatever, like there were high school kids playing basketball on or playing football on the lawn. Yeah. While I was doing that, like they were ripping up the White House lawn, right. catching a football. <laughs> right. And I'm rolling wheels across the floor. You know, I wasn't doing sloppies or anything. Like, <laughs> no, do you give, do you like but, respond to these or do you just let it die down? Uh, or do you, do you, I, do you have to I think, think I made a comment like that. Like okay. I wasn't, I didn't hurt anything. I right. rolled my wheels across the floor. I was celebrating why I got there. Yeah, and that's the end of it. it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Um, but, but I think, you know, the, the larger story for me is that because I got so much ridicule growing up as a skater, firstly, okay, like in elementary school in the late seventies, you're already like, you're not even, you're not even nerd cool. <laughs> like you're, <laughs> you're, you know what I mean? They're like jocks, nerds, skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> like you're up there with yo-yo players. Okay. Right. Got you. Right. It's true. Like yeah. you're and, and so I already had that, that experience mm -hmm. of sort of, getting ridicule for what I was doing. And then I started skating. And then because my style was so like, they called it circus tricks. All I did was tricks. And, mm -hmm. and you know, everything was about how you flow and your style and you slash and you're gnarly. So I was in this little, you know, I, I was in this little group of skater skaters. Was, skating was a very small community. Mm -hmm. I was an outcast in that community. Really? <laughs> right. Cause yeah. like my style yeah. was lame. Oh, right. Okay. You know, and it, it, as it came to be, and then it was like, there's two kids, there's Christian and there's Tony and whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I got used to, so it set me up for, and I'm almost thankful for it. It set me up for all this online hate. Cause it's like, cause I already, like, You've already dealt with it your whole life. It, yeah. I, they used to say this to my face. <laughs> like you're hiding behind an anonymous Twitter account. Right? Good luck getting to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. But but even even after that. So then you know after that then I got shit for doing big corporate sponsorships. Yeah. Bagel bites. Bagel bites. Yeah. Right. Yeah. McDonald's. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like. Dude, if, if McDonald's had offered me a sponsorship when I was 16, I would have taken it in a heartbeat oh, yeah. for free food. Like, I, yeah. I didn't even have to get paid. You know <laughs> what I go. mean? Like, yeah. I, I was eating McDonald's then. I eat it now. Yeah. Like, that, that, I, I'm staying true to my values in that right. sense. Right. right. Um, but, but through those years, I was getting a lot of hate. Like, they used to call me Bagel Boy. Bagel Boy. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, whatever. I'm still eating bagel bites. I did notice that you guys <laughs> we did we made we, some we, here. Yes, yeah. we uh, we laid um, out a little hors d'oeuvre hors d'oeuvre tray. <laughs> yes, well played for you. Yeah, well played. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, but but at the same time, like I I was already I, I had I, I guess I just had been hardened. Yes, in my past for all that stuff. So when it came time to really. The same time stand too. up for myself. I was like, please, like I, I'm doing what I do. Right. I love what I do. I. I I'm, I'm representing w the things I feel that are are represent who I am, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and this is it. At the same time, too, you got to feed your family. You know, this is like a yeah, you know well, these they, endorsements. You know, I, there was and definitely stuff, a time or, where I was I was living hand to mouth. Like yeah. when, when Riley was born, I was eat, this is no lie. Like when Riley was born, I, um, his mom was a manicurist. We would use her tips for money to go eat out. Wow. So like we'd go to Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a lie. And then uh, I was eating Top Ramen and peanut butter jelly sandwiches pretty exclusively through those first couple of years. Wow. wow. Um, and when, I mean, I, it's not, you know what I mean? It's, I'm not sitting here like it was, it was, I got to skate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I didn't care. Like right. it, it, that's what I was doing to supplement being able to skate for a career still. Yeah. For you sure. know, I had to, I had to scale back. But was it was it, it tough going to. from like the peak of the you know like the eighties? Probably selling it tons came and tons of boards. It, and it then, came very quickly, yeah. so it was tough initially. My my royalty checks and my salaries dropped by half every month. Oh, Jeez. every yeah. month, every month, every month. So skateboard royalties were going from you know in the thousands to the hundreds to like yeah. Oh my god! And then and then I get a call from Airwalk like, oh, we're gonna have to cut back your salary like oh uh, half oh okay jeez and Damn. then half again and then you know and then eventually like you can't afford to live in this house anymore and the ramps are all falling apart anyway yeah. so 
so I sold, I, I, I mean, the, the, the whole story of that is that I took a second mortgage out on the house we were in in Fallbrook with the ramps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The ramps were trashed. Uh, I couldn't afford to keep them up. And I started Birdhouse with that money and then sold the house for what I owed on it. No way. Yeah. Wow. And then moved into uh, a duplex that was the first house I bought and just sort of scaled back and figured out how to make it work Damn. through those years. Wow. Because when, when Perry and I started Birdhouse, we started with, with the hope that skateboarding was going to come back around. But we thought it was going to happen quicker. Quicker. Yeah. yeah. It's a wave. Skateboarding goes up and it, it, down. It goes up it's, and it's down, a, but, but yeah. we thought the up would come sooner. Mm. And so the lean years were 94, 95, mm-hmm. um, when we almost gave up. We you had, almost we called had it quits. serious discussions of like, this isn't working. We're barely covering our salaries, Ooh. which are barely covering our living expenses. Yeah. You know, and, and I was doing everything I can to make ends meet. I mean, I, I edited videos for, I edited the foundation video. Which one? Uh, whatever it was in 92 cocktails or I don't even know sorry wow it wow. was all everything's a blur back then what was the turning point I knew I was going to come into the the skate nerd uh, uh, yeah I was yeah, going to come into the is. beehive of skate nerd <laughs> and I was going to be outranked so <laughs> it's alright I accept that um, but and, and other things like just random jobs Jeremy Klein mm-hmm. was working for NEC Turbo Graphics he brought them down to my house to edit a, a promo video really because I was going to get a thousand bucks for it. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jeremy. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. What yeah. was the turning point when Birdhouse finally, what was the... About 96, 97. Okay. Um, X Games started, things started sort of... Uh, s- s- skateboarding started coming back around. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. In, in, in kind of in the way that we hoped it would, but not that we expected. Mm-hmm. And then sales started increasing, and then it was like, well, wait, things are like bigger than we imagined very quickly. Mm. So like 98, 99 was like, whoa, this is working. Okay. Like, having a skate company works. Like we're, we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. And then after like 2000 and video games, it got crazy. Way bigger than we ever dreamed. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to talk a little bit about the end because that was like a big childhood thing. Like how was it? For me growing up, like, how was it filming with that, those cameras? Seemed like you probably spent a lot of film on that. Yeah, well, the... Uh, <laughs> a lot of money on film, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it, like, that was when things started ramping up. Um, you know, the last videos that we made, I made, <laughs> were, <laughs> was in 94. So we made Feasters, Ravers, Non-Title. Those were my videos. Mm-hmm. And, and everyone was complaining that we were, like, trying to churn out videos too fast and the quality wasn't there. And... I understood, but for me, that was the only marketing I knew how to do. So I was just churning them out as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we, you know, we, we shifted the focus. Jeremy Klein became the art director and things started rolling and we didn't have to do videos. Yeah. Oh. Um, and, but then uh, Jamie Mossberg, Mouse, approached me and he's like, hey, I think, I think you should make a video for your team because the team's on fire and you haven't done one and, and I can do it in film. And I think I can bring the cost down if we don't develop like bales. That oh. was pretty much his pitch to me. Like if I take rolls of film and I and we don't develop them, if we know that there's much bales on it, or if I if I can cut a certain point, that's going to save you. And so Pear and I committed. I think we committed a hundred grand to the video project. Wow! At that point in ninety seven ish. It's a like lot. Early ninety seven. Yeah, it was a lot. It's yeah. A lot. <laughs> Yeah, but but we believed in it, and and we had you know we had Jeremy on board, we had Heath, we had Barra. Oh my gosh, great Bucky. Team. Yeah, so it was like, and Andrew, and it was just yeah. like, we we should put our money where our mouth is. Like Don't we should Sumner. we should try this. What's that? And Sumner, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it was a gamble for sure. Uh, and then uh, we started shooting it, and as we were getting the footage back, we we're like, oh yeah, this is. This is awesome. It's yeah. gonna work. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then Jamie had this brainstorm, <clears throat> I, I, or whatever. <laughs> you know, I think it was it was a high idea, so okay. to speak. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> that he's like, we need to put a ramp in a bull ring. In a bull oh. ring. Yeah. I was like, how? How? It's like it's a bull ring. Two one. I think we can rent it. So we drove down there, asked the dude. He's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had it for, I think, 10 days. Okay. He's like, yeah, $200 a day. I was like, what? <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> Two, okay. So we drove back to the US, went to an ATM. Yeah. 
got two grand, okay. like with, you know, multiple withdrawals <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Came back. We're like here. And he's like, okay. Wrapped it up in a, in a rubber band, put it in his pocket. He's like, okay. <laughs> that's it. That's Four it. Boring zeros. Boring zeros. But then you had to bring, then you had to build the ramp. Yeah, so, so Tim Pan it came more in. more than ten, two grand. I mean, at the end of the day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, just, I mean, but it just was, to rent the facility. Sure, the ramp, yeah. whatever. The ramp was. Production value though. Plus the tip. Oh yeah, yeah, no, the production value. Oh yeah, yeah. no, it was brilliant. And, and, uh, I do, I have to admit though, so I really thought I was going to make a 900 for that video. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Um, I thought that, you know, all, all roads were leading to that because I'd put so much effort and money into it and mm -hmm. my part, like I had been killing myself trying to get all this footage. And then I was like, well, we're going to build a ramp. It's bigger than all the other ramps. You know, the one in the Bullring, I think that's probably gonna be the one I did it. And, and the entire time that we were shooting that, we only shot the Bullring for three days, I think. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was leading up to trying that at the end. I couldn't get out of my head what happened when I broke my rib uh, at the plan B ramp. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be jacked up in Tijuana. Yes. Like, I, I know that seems like a ridiculous thought, but, but definitely it was there where I was okay. just like, I can't get fucked up again and be stuck in Mexico. <sighs> like, I just, I don't, I don't feel good with that. Man. And so uh, I never really committed to it. I mean, in hindsight, Did I'm Did you have thankful. a medical staff? No. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> medic. Raj, they had masseuses yeah. and uh, yeah. yeah, they had not, everything. Not at all, no. What was the medic's name with the, the mustache? Barry. Barry. Yeah, no, it, Barry, Barry was not around then during those days. <laughs> but still, you can't have that in the back of your it was, mind. But it was, and, it, and, and, and I think that was there, there was this mental block for me where it was mm -hmm. just like, I could get really fucked up on but this. Yeah, and, but you did try but, but then it. again, like, but then we did the loop, and that wasn't in my head. Oh, yeah. You know, so. The loop. Yeah, but I had not at that time in my life gotten really messed up on a loop yet. Okay. So I was naive enough that I was blissfully ignorant of the risks involved. And so when I did the loop, it was like, oh, yeah, it works. Yeah, it's fine. The loop seems like no big deal compared to the 900 to me. The loop seems like, okay, yeah, go up. I just got to make sure I, oh. I pump and then just go. I got to go it, fast enough to hold me up. You yes, know? But, but having not had the experience and only seeing the photos of Dwayne yeah. breaking his collarbone. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. You know what right. I mean? Like that's that, right. that's the only reference I had yeah. True. was, was him doing that, that um, plexiglass one and getting jacked. And so I didn't really know. Right. You know, and I had to figure it out and it was, it was daunting. But then once I figured it out, then, um, uh, who was it? Um, Peter Hewitt was there mm -hmm. and, Al Partnan, mm -hmm. uh, Peter Hewitt, and Matt Moffat were there. They helped with the ramp. Okay. And they were like, can we try the lube after you try it? Because we're going to tear it down the next day. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, try it. But, you know, if you, if you get it, please hold the footage. Hold it <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Peter and Al got it. They got it? Really? Yeah. Hey. And Peter slammed so hard, like shot out on the exit. His helmet hit, flew off his head. I thought, like, oh, that was traumatic wow. and he got up and made it oh my gosh yeah. dude because well, i mean what's the uh the process because they put like uh pads below it first they, to try to they, they, yeah i did yes what do you mean like, <laughs> they, no i'm just saying like you act like there's this there's this group that's figuring it out like no it was all us just trying to figure it but out i mean like they have but to slide brought, the pads in when yeah, you're that, yes that's yes. what i meant yeah yeah so yeah. there so well now we do have a process for it okay like now you know I've, I've opened up my loop to a few different groups and now mm -hmm. i i have this way to teach people how to do it oh. and i can tell early on if they're going to get it and i can usually tell early on if they're not going to get it so we start to weed people out as as people start progressing on it because there's you sort were, of if a, i was going to if you were if i was going to if i was standing up there i was going to try to do the loop what would you how, how would you instru okay. instruct me to uh all right so th the trick to the, the loop is that it is a carve it is not a trick mm -hmm. it's a right? carve it's a carve and it's a carve that you don't need to pump speed out of okay mm -hmm. so the whole thing is once you once you are hitting the transition, mm -hmm. you sort of do a half pump on your front leg and you hold it and you wait till you see the flat come around. And as soon as you see it around, you release that pump. That's it. It's a half pump in the front leg. Pretty much. So yeah. basically you just want to get to 12 o'clock and then it'll take you the rest of the way. You don't know when you're at 12 o'clock. It's mm -hmm. like a roller coaster. You, you don't, don't really know when you're upside down unless you're like looking at okay. the ground, right? Okay, right. So at this, it, you're just looking at the ramp and, and you're trying to stay in the center of because you're going straight and then you have to do a it's little, a little bit carve. Of a right. And then you have to straighten out again. And you see a lot of people, in, like when Matt Moffat did it at the mm -hmm. boring, he kept shooting out at 12 o'clock back to the entrance. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. hairball. Like we had to shut him down. Yeah. You had to no more. Yeah, yeah. Because it was... 
he almost missed the pads a few times. Yeah, yeah. And, and then Paul as we Schaefer. saw, Tom Shar. Well, then there's also the Schaefer element, but Tom Shar like carved too much and missed the pads and shot out and he broke his shoulder. Oh shit! Oh, wow. Dang, dude. So it, it's heavy. Like it, it's it's the easiest, most dangerous mm -hmm. thing probably. That you, that you know, one of the of ramp thing you can do. Well, it looks yeah. intimidating too. It's just like there's. Going, yeah, well, try <laughs> try building one and then driving up and going. I guess it's on me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. That was my feeling. Like, oh, what have I done? Yeah. Roger actually built one in the alley, so we're gonna go back out there after the show. I'll and, teach uh, you. I'm yeah. actually I'm gonna put mine up soon. Actually, are you? Oh. Yeah, you're gonna do um, it again. No, not me. I'm, oh, <laughs> you're done. You wouldn't do Those, it again if you if you. I won't get. I like, feel like you could just uh, bust out a loop. I no? can. Well, so every time we put it up, I I do go to the day before or like okay. warm up mm -hmm. and I go into the pads a couple times just to show people what it's like oh. but I'm not going to get any satisfaction over doing it again okay you know we, we built it's one fun it's it's fun when you exit but uh, but like we built one for my tour for the Huck Jam tour uh -huh. we did it every night for 30 shows oh gotcha it's it's lost it's luster for me there you go I, I don't really do like, do like multiple loops you just like Hot Wheels track, oh but then like, what, like let's, let's put it this way. At one point, I had I had that loop so dialed that because it, it was we had my vert ramp and then and then the roll into the loop was on mm -hmm. the back side of the vert ramp, yeah. right? So I, I like used to warm up. I would go do a, do a line, mm -hmm. pop out, late shove into the landing ramp of the loop, then do the loop. Oh, sick! Like that. You know, I mean, we just had it like yeah, that. You had your, yeah, yeah. Me, Bucky, Bob, Andy. Okay. Um, and it wasn't even a thing. So, like I said, for me, and I'm not trying to downplay it. It's still gnarly. It, it feels great when you when you get it, mm -hmm. when you finally figure it out. But I'm just not going to get anything out You've of it except it. that. Been cool, there, you're 50. That, you did yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I do like seeing. I really enjoy seeing people who. There's a sort of a mindset with it. That like, if you see it as a skater, and you have any desire to do it you're obsessed with it and that's how i was okay. and that's how the most of the people who have done it were the people who are like eh, i'll try it mm -hmm. they don't usually come through no yeah. but it must be rad for you too knowing that you've done it and seeing the joy that people get it's when super, they do it yeah it's, you know i mean that's 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 not exciting. that many people like, in the world can say they've done the loop. No, I think it's you know? less than 20, maybe. Less than 20. Yeah. There you go. It was really fun was helping fun. Jaws through yeah. it. Because I knew Jaws I knew Jaws had the mindset. Of course. And I knew like after his first couple attempts, I was like, he's got it. It's coming, yeah. 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 What, what do you think? Do you think Raj would be uh, eligible? Do you think he would be... Uh, be uh, I mean, you know, I know you probably it's haven't that, seen... You gotta have the fire. That's what it is. Like, yeah, well... Hmm, I don't see the fire in Raj's have, eyes yeah, with the loop. You know, you don't go with loop and go... Maybe yeah, yeah. first try. I'll yeah, take a photo myself. Yeah, why not? Uh, Dan Stewart. He did it. He took a Dan photo Stewart did it. Yeah. It. Oh, he did. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I was there when Bam did it in Phoenix. Mm. Yeah. So uh, do you remember that? That was that was for that was a Huck Jam yep. show that aired before a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and the Fox dude, the, the guy from Fox Sports, was all football. And all he wanted was like Bam freaking out about it. Yeah. And so Bam started getting close and eating shit. And then he's like, cool, we got the segment. I was like, <laughs> he's going to do it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we got what we need. And I was like, he's going to do it. Like yeah. in the next three try, he's got it. He's like, ah. And then I talked him into shooting more and then Bam did it. And yeah. I was like, I told you. <laughs> he's like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like it wouldn't even. Yeah, but to him, it was matter. a better story for him just eating shit. Yeah. 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 Wow. I was hyped for Bam though. Yeah. One of these days, Raj, we'll make it out there. We'll do the loop. I don't know. Oh, I the actually, date is set. If you guys want to come, <laughs> I, you have a list of dudes like waiting to do the loop. I well, I put feelers out there mm. to see who might be interested. Okay. And this time, I don't have anyone that is gunning for it. No. Most people that I've asked are say the exact same thing. Oh, yeah, I'd love to come watch, and maybe I'll try. That's that's been the the stock answer from yeah. everyone. Yeah. So Didn't, far. Did Bob Bergquist do it? Switch? Yeah. yeah. A, the the after Schaefer. After, after Schaefer. After oh, that, that, that was gnarly. Yeah. That was gnarly. Yeah. Whatever had to it. Was he okay after that, or did he get taken to the hospital? He like he, he went, like oh, went he in the corner. The hospital. Yeah. Hey, that's how I broke my pelvis. Oh, you broke your I, pelvis. I Schaefer on Bob's. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it's sad that we call it a Schaefer, but I did. I, I <laughs> because Bob's his role in was super weathered and mm. so it didn't give me the right amount of speed and i tried to compensate that by pumping through it and you don't pump through it and of all people i should know that oh my god but i was just like we're on we're doing 
we were doing Wild Boys. And I was going to get it. And then I pumped and, <laughs> and I was like, monkey oh, costume. I'm in the air. I'm fucked. Jeez. Broke your pelvis. Yeah. Most, most painful injury, maybe? Most painful injury, yes. Oh. How long did that take to recover? Because they can't do anything for you, took, right? You can't be in a cast or, I mean. It took about, uh, it took me about two months to walk. Damn. To really walk properly. Okay. It took me a good year mm. to get my skating back to where I was satisfied with it. Wow. Because I kept compensating and leaning on my back foot unintentionally, like uh, unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And I kept shooting out on things. Um, and, and I actually broke two tails off my board pumping. Really? Seriously? Whoa, because I was, I was overcompensating with the back foot. So I was in the back seat a lot. And I would like pump for something and, and pump so hard on my back foot that my tail would snap off. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. That's insane. We figured it out. <laughs> well, listen, I want to go. I want to. I want to talk to you about um, Lakai and uh, because you skate for Lakai, right? I do. Yes. How is that? To me, I think it's amazing. So sad. You skate <laughs> yeah. for Lakai. It's yeah. it's so sick. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's fun. It's funny though because, like, you know, uh, the first thought maybe is like, "Oh, Tony Hawk. Why wouldn't he go skate for Nike, Nike or yeah. Adidas or mm -hmm. some of these bigger companies? Or you have know, his own like shoe company? Or have you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we did that seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, the way it all lined up was was we had a licensing deal with uh, Kohl's to do shoes, Hawk shoes. Yeah, because we had Hawk clothing at Kohl's. Okay. Yeah. Quicksilver owned Hawk clothing. Mm -hmm. um, that got phased out of Kohl's not long ago. And Cherokee is a brand of, of apparel. They bought they bought hot clothing from Quicksilver, so now Cherokee okay. owns the the license. Um, and that was the end of Hawk Shoes for the most part. And that was kind of you know I didn't ride for them, but I made royalties from from the shoes selling. Okay, right. They were um, and I didn't really name. have a reason to you know do anything else. And then that ended, and I was just wearing Riley shoes because Riley had shoes. Yeah, they were cool, and I'd put I put Jaws insoles in them uh, oh, so okay. I could skate vert. And then I was like, I'm That's good to go. Sense. And then eventually, like, Lakai just took notice, like, I don't think Tony's really going for a shoe sponsor here. <laughs> I think he's just doing this. Just, and I was like, yeah, let's make it official. No way. Yeah. That's so sad. That's, That's really amazing. Bad. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, uh, you know, I, I mean... Uh, has did any of the big brands hit you up to do shoes? Uh, or, I mean, we like, had brief discussions, okay. but but really, it's not that I wasn't interested. I definitely would be interested in you know I, Vans. Like I started on Vans. Yeah, right? like, yep, yep. When I first started skating, it was a dream to have Vans shoes. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was more like it was either that they had their program with whoever it was that was more like the you know the legendary skater mm -hmm. or they wanted too much from me and my time oh like it was either one or the other with all the big brands because okay. you know if you're going to sign a, a big contract they're going to want a lot of your time totally. and my time is so spread thin as it is um that i didn't really that wasn't interesting to me mm -hmm. and lakai to me is still you know a smaller brand mm -hmm. even though they've they hit a stride and oh yeah and they're an endemic skatesman and and really it was more like me whittling away at at all these bigger obligations and it was like i want to have skate sponsors yes, you know bones yes. indie birdhouse lakai wow Sick. so that's where it went and and they just designed a shoe for me that is insane what do you mean <laughs> insane <laughs> like it's it's one of the best things like it's one of the most things i'm have been most excited about having a signature anything really yeah yeah, yeah. You guys will really like it. Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't like they haven't announced it yet. They're going okay. to in the next month. So Okay, um, we'll look out but, for it. But but the design and the colorways is is epic. So you're hyped. I'm hyped, yeah. Wow. And it's also cool too to be uh same uh team as uh Riley it's and everything. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well I gotta ride his coattails a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking too? Because he's got the long hair, he's got some tattoos and everything when he was That's starting his crew, to you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't care though that he when he got when he got tattoos and all and was kind of Do you have any tattoos? Uh, I do. I have a pretty bad um hawk head that is our clothing <laughs> logo. Oh really? Yeah. So you didn't care that he was kind of going and getting some tattoos um, and stuff. And I understood. Okay. I, the day he turned 18, mm -hmm. he, he sent me a photo of his first tattoo. Sent and he was like, hey, dad, I got this. <laughs> and it was this big black Sabbath right here. On his arm. Yeah. His forearm. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, okay. What? How? Wh how did? He's like, well, I was going to get Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath. And I was like. All right, cool. Well, my only advice is don't get them on your neck. Okay. <laughs> that's a good advice. Yeah. Because I, I knew 
it was obvious that he was super hyped on it and that was the beginning of something else so yeah. Yeah. right well oh what, what's interesting too is um you were we were talking uh off camera that you got you you have like a a, a show on Sirius, right yeah mm-hmm. yeah said for a long time uh yeah for 14 no 16 years no, no four, 14 Jeez, years right wow. right and how does that work right because uh do you record stuff here and then uh, so originally um it was on the faction channel which is like punk and hip-hop okay, okay. And we would do it live Mm -hmm. and take phone calls and play music and, and, you know, just kind of shoot the shit. And then, uh, and then we started getting guests. And so we do guests. Sometimes we do live performances and it was always different. And then Ellis was, was one of my co-hosts. And then Ellis, they thought was such a character that they gave him his own show. And now he's like the face of the channel, which, Mm -hmm. which I kind of expected to happen, but it happened very quickly. He's great. Um, He's great by the way. But now, now we're on faction talk. So our show is just talk. And so I had to really ramp up getting guests. Oh. Um, and I'd say in the last year, I really did that. I mean, in the last, just in the last few months, we had Jason Sudeikis, we had Judd Apatow, um, we had <sighs> Allison Mosshart, Jack Black, oh, wow. um, David Spade. Do you go, do you have a studio you go to? or do I you go to the Sirius of... Studios. Oh, it used do? to be live and we would do it at my office at my ramp. Oh, okay. But now we're on at a different time and I can't do it live. It's mm. usually on Saturday and that's when we're with kids. So yeah. um, I just record at the Sirius Studios in Hollywood. Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy doing I've that I've learned stuff? to enjoy it better. I, when, when it first came and it was talk only, I was f- panicked. Seriously? Yeah, because it was... Great, you're a great talker, But it though. was way you're... easier for me to segue into like, oh, and this song... Did, you know what I mean? Or, or yeah. like, oh, so this, you were good at seg- and taking calls, and you were good at orchestrating. Yeah, yeah. And then when it was Ooh. just like, it's you and this dude in a room for an hour, go. That got daunting, but mm. I figured it out. Do you think it's easier it to get guests now that you're sh- like shooting them in Hollywood? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. And I have, I have sort of a, a, a network of connections. Yeah. I don't have anyone booking it. I do it I'm too much doing on my own. Oh, really? oh. But um, I definitely have a, a good network and a good group of friends that don't mind. Oh you know, passing on a number. When, there you go. When you had David Spade on, did you guys reminisce about Police Academy 4? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> David's awesome. So I had David Spade on and then we, I did him a favor by doing a prank show he was producing mm-hmm. and oh, to, yeah. return, to return the favor, Okay. I was like, I really need you to dress up as Joe Dirt for our <laughs> skate video. Yeah. Because Clint is a massive Joe Dirt fan. <laughs> and he's like, all right. Because David's like, he's always like, mm, like curmudgeon. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Well, if you do want to, if you can do this, if you do this show, all right, I'll, I'll find the, I'll find the mustache and I'll find the sideburns. Okay. <laughs> and so then he did, he, he literally was like, was was gluing on a cyborg as we're driving no to way. the spot to do it. And that was the first cameo we got for the birdhouse video. And that set us up for every other cameo. Cause all I had to do was like, well, oh, David Spade did it. There, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you want to be in our video? Great ideas, by the way, doing all that. I loved all that stuff. Uh, yeah, that was fun. That was the most and, work for me yeah. in the video besides my own skating was just like trying to secure those things. I bet, like, I bet. Yeah, like Did Eric you, Andre, a jackass dude. It's like, yeah. but it was fun. Yeah, David Spade seems like a cool dude. He's Isn't super he? cool. Seems like yeah. just a regular. I, I love old, him. Yeah, yeah. I would love to come on your show. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> I've, been, I've been waiting all episodes for the, uh, the invite. You know, let's do it. No, but what do you talk about with the? Do you just like? Do you have like a, a thing? Like, okay, Jack Black's coming uh, on. Let me I'm talk getting, about I'm this. I'm getting better at researching you? the subject. Mm-hmm. Like yesterday, okay. we had John Hamm, guy from Mad Men. Oh, sick. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, and I, I didn't watch Mad Men. I knew of it, yeah. I knew of, of its popularity, but but I felt weird going into it. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of used that as a segue about his success into the other things that I knew about him that I'd seen, mm. but did enough research that I at least sounded like I knew what I was talking about. I don't know, yeah. you know, it's, there's some nuances there and and it's taken a long time to figure it out. But No, but trust I me, I out, bullshit yeah. my way through a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sure, no, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's sketchy and... and some people are offended that you don't know everything they do. Some people are like, think it's too creepy that you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, these rumors. So you right. have to, you, you have to walk that? that line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just listen to a lot of Howard Stern. So I kind of like kind of take That's, his, I mean, I for sure. He's, 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 from him. He, he's the, yeah, he, He's the top of the mountain. He yeah. could like make anything. If, if you watch him, if, if, and for sure, I, I took a lot of cues from him in yeah. terms of, really being present and knowing what what the subject matter is and and the journey there yeah if you can at least identify with that and and 
have empathy for whatever it is mm -hmm. you can have have them open up a conversation totally and it's way more fun that way yep. i mean the, like judd apatow came in i was freaking out <laughs> were you yeah yeah i'm a massive fan of okay. all of his work you know what i mean like i was overwhelmed it was almost like i'm not worthy to have this guy <laughs> on my show but just i just sort of um I related what I did to what he did and, and some of our journeys and, you know, the struggles and like open mic nights and yeah. me doing demos in parking lots and, and we made a connection and, and it was, he loved, like he, he emailed me after like, that was awesome. Tell me how to promote it. Sick. <laughs> so God. it was super cool. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that's on demand. Judd Aptow. Yeah, there you Demolition go. Demolition Radio. There you go. 103. I think Sirius just came out with a new app, too, so yeah, that, everything's that, really yes, uh, that's formulated. Why I said that. and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Were you on, ever on Howard Stern's show? Uh, no, I met him. I was on the wrap-up show once, oh. um, and I met him at a bar mitzvah, of all things, <laughs> um, from the head of Sirius, uh -oh. his kid, so Howard was there, obviously. Kind of um, surprising that you've never been on the I, You know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to delve into all the all the sort of nonsense and yeah, tabloid he, stuff be, that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know he's more not like that now, but right. I know that that would be a, a, a heavy topic. And it's just like, I'm just kind of beyond trying you know to what discuss I, the all that thing stuff. too is that I think that like, you know, if Howard, I think you should do it because but, well, he may not be because, along for, but also because around for that long, because I've heard him talk about our sports mm -hmm. and he's not really a fan. Like he, he equates skateboarding to riding dirt bikes when you're a little kid. So really? go change his perspective. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I, I, I'm not pitching myself, oh, Band, but, but he loves jackass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 He just had Johnny Knoxville on <coughs> right. like he loved. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. And, and I like, I like being like, I've been on the, I've been on the super fan round table. I've been on the wrap up show. Okay. Like I'm connected to it as, as closely as I want right. to be. Okay. You know, and, and I, I still am a huge be, fan. Being an, be interviewed by Howard Stern is just like, I mean, that, for sure. yeah, life yeah. goal. <laughs> there was, know? there was a time that he was talking about, I, they were interviewing some girl that like dated a guy I knew mm -hmm. and he kept thinking it was me. Oh. So was Mike Escamilla rooftop. Okay. And, and he kept saying like, and, and he kept talking about, well, yeah, and you were it was Tony Hawk. And then and at some point he said, what's that, that guy with the skateboard? <laughs> and so I became that guy with the that skateboard. With the skateboard <laughs> and, right. and I like, I was like, I made it. You made it. Yeah. Howard Stern thinks of me as that guy with the skateboard. Yeah. That's all I need. I guess if Howard Stern mentions you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. One of these days, Raj, I'll make it on the Howard Stern show. Huh? He's going to mention you and just be like, I need to get a restraining order against this guy. You guys need a, <laughs> you, you guys, your shows are so long now. You should need a nine club wrap up show. Well, it's funny that you say, because like I trip on Howard Stern because his interviews are like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah. It goes and by super you get fast. So much information out of his yeah. like episodes. I'm like, I mean, we sit here for a couple hours and then kind yeah. of just, you know, uh, do, you know, I'm just, I keep waiting for you to say, well, you've said it all. Oh, uh, that's coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's been his new thing lately, actually. Did you guys work or film? Did you guys film together back in the day for audio? Not a whole days? lot. He had his whole crew, like Jared and everyone. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. So you guys didn't really nine hundred films. Yeah. Oh, oh there you go. Right, We've been right, going right. since the, since the Trick Tips videos. Yeah. Trick Tips. Wow. Still going. Yeah. Biggest rival. Biggest rival. I mean, quote unquote rival, because you was it you and Christian Soy or was I mean it, that uh, was that was the that was the public perception. Public we were perception. we were homies for yeah. sure. I mean, for sure we both you know it, everything was competition, so you wanted to win. There yeah. you go. Yeah, and so we would a lot of times trade off first and second, and okay. Um, but Christian said like you guys would just sit back and kind of laugh at all kind, that was going yeah, on. Yeah, it got ugly for a little bit, not yeah. between us, but between the camps. Yeah, mm. and like a Del Mar contest, all the all the NorCal dudes were booing me while I skated. And then all the Del Mar guys who weren't really that quick to want to defend me. You know what I mean? Like uh, they were, and then finally they were just like, well, that's, that's so, that's fucked up that they're booing him. And so then they started flipping off the NorCal dudes and it became like, people were throwing golf balls and trash at each other. And it, like, whoa. that's when it got weird. Okay. Yeah. And Christian and I are just like, What's <laughs> what is happening here? Yeah. You know? And then, um, um, so we, that was that happened, but but then like through the X Games, they always pitted me and Andy together. Like that was like oh, they, Andy they needed. Well, yeah, they needed something. Yeah, yeah. like they yeah. needed some rivalry and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, but then you guys would go do doubles and stuff too. Like you yeah, would take whatever. Yeah. They, they got to create that stuff. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you enjoy doing doubles stuff, or is it not really your? Oh yeah, it's fun. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, there's things that we've done that I never want to do again, like oh, the yeah. double oh, hand okay. plants. That was like, <laughs> well we did that we did that for a video and he kept 
calling me like we got to get a photo of that and, mm. I was, and i just did not want to do it again because it was so frightening <laughs> okay. and the one we got on video was like pretty good but it wasn't you know it wasn't the shot and then um I was just like, mm, and then I kept ignoring his calls. <laughs> this, is, this went on for about a month and a half. Decline, decline. Okay. Yeah. It was. And then finally he left me yesterday. like, because he, he just knew. He's like, look, I know it's scary, but we have to get a photo of it. Right. <laughs> like, we have to get a good photographer. He's like, call Atiba. That was the message he left. Okay. So I called Atiba, like, Atiba, do you want to shoot me Nandy doing a double invert? He's like, yeah, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> so we, we set a date. And we made it happen. Did you discuss and who was going to be a top and who was going to be a bottom? I was always the one on top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you seem like a top kind of guy. Yeah. I know. I knew that was going <laughs> to. I will tell you this. One of the ones that we that uh, that we were trying, we were trying. I was like, all right, I'm committing to this one. I'm going to make this one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I went to plant my hand, and it, his board wasn't in the same place. And my and I just kept going down, and then my hand was on his ass, <laughs> and I made it. You hand planted off his ass. <laughs> yeah, and I made it because. He he turns the other like he, we go he turned the other the cheek <laughs> <laughs> great video by the way that was pretty good <laughs> that was it but that was the first one we made first that was one. the first one we made it was, it was just like well we know we can make it and I know I can drop another couple feet <laughs> yeah. and still do it right <laughs> but that is the scariest thing because you, you go up and right I hope my coping's there there it yeah. is. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like to, to watch where you're supposed to put your hand is mm-hmm. one of the scariest things ever. So man, I prefer not to do that one again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, some of the other stuff we've done, like we can recreate it and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, that one's you and uh, Riley should do like a dual ad or something, you know, we've done a couple really cool. little things. Yeah. Okay. He can skate really, Yeah. He really did sad. a 540 on Vert when he was 10. Seriously. What? Yeah. Jeez. Dude. Yeah. Like early grab it's in the blood about three quarters of the way up. Yeah. And then, uh, and then he tried to do it again on video and um, on a slippery ramp, and like just washed out and chicken necked, and never tried it again. Oh, oh man! Yeah. Well, we're gonna have Riley on the show pretty soon, man. He's uh, we've talked, you know. He's a uh, yeah. So we'll we'll get a lot of uh, stories about you that we didn't get <laughs> that we didn't get today, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Follow up. Yeah, I will be surprised at the amount of talking he does. Oh, he's not a big talker. You well, know, also a, Riley's used to being interviewed in like by more mainstream. Oh, that's true. You know, publications and whatnot. So, yeah, stuff like that. So it's never that skate centric. So, yeah, no, yeah. you know, he he has a harder time with the more lofty interview type of questions. Right. It's a weird thing. I mean, you're. I mean, it probably took you a long time to get used to that too. Like that. Those mainstream yeah, yeah, yeah. questions. No, I, yeah. And, and like, and the first time I ever did a promotion, I went through media training. I was like, "What is media now, training? How do you go through? Does somebody like?" How do you go? Through that? How do you even? Hook, um, like, well, so who tells on, you that you should go through media training? Well, Your agents so or something. It was it was for a promotion, for like for a for a product. Oh, and so like these are the talking okay. points yeah. when people ask you, "This is the messaging," and that doesn't really happen that much anymore because people have have been left more to their own devices with social media. Okay. But back then it was like, we're going to do a round robin of interviews. Radio station is going to call in all morning. These are the things we need you to say. Oh. And that's how it would work. Or Mm -hmm. you're going to be on a talk show. You're going on David Letterman. This is, this is what we need the messaging to be. Right. You know, you do an interview and you do pre-interview and you, you know, you talk about other things, but when it comes time to promote the plug or whatever it is, you got to be on point right? or you're not going to get hired again. There you go. Yeah. And so you got to kind of got to memorize all this stuff. A little bit, but then you, you know, I, I, learned, your own I think words. I learned more, learned more that I can be more natural with it and mm-hmm. put it in my own words. And that is like having the success on social media that, you know, suddenly I was being recognized for what I was putting out there yeah. and people wanted to pay me to put stuff on social media. I got to, call the shots there you go yeah. and that was pretty cool that's a, yeah you know because like the first one that happened it was like this is what you have to say i was like i'm not putting that out there yeah no one believes that's my voice mm-hmm. and everyone's just going to be like later right yeah. you right. know it's going to do more damage than good and yeah. so i was like if you let me do this in my own voice i'm in You're and right. eventually right. like I, I i think i just proved myself you know through the other stuff i was doing and they're like all right cool yeah let's do it right um and it's fun. Like yeah. I, I dig it. Yeah. Speaking of David Letterman, you were didn't you like uh, do like a little mini mega in the street or something on David Letterman? Or yeah. Was that a different talk show? That was Letterman. Letterman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Must be amazing because Letterman. I mean. Yeah, but yeah. it's nerve wracking, man. Like you're up there. You only get that one try. Yeah. <laughs> Live television. Better make it. Yeah. What did you do? Five forty or something. <laughs> Uh, I did a 360 over the gap to a 540 on the quarter pipe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anything else that you've uh, been 
invited to do that you've just been blown away? That, Simpsons. Like, I can't believe- oh, oh, that's right. Wow. Yeah, that there was by go. far the coolest TV thing wow. that I could ever do. The Simpsons. Yeah. It's got to be pretty sick to be animated. Yeah. Well, when they asked me to do it, I was like, oh my God, I get to do a guest on The Simpsons. They sent me the script and I was like, I am the main character in this. That's awesome. <laughs> the whole episode. This you is were crazy. Literally... It, it was it was me mentoring Bart. Mm-hmm. Oh my! Because gosh. he was emancipated from his parents, and like I became his surrogate dad. It's <laughs> it's still to this day is like I can't believe I got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and the process for that. Are you going into the recording studios with? No. The, you're going in by yourself. I did well. I thought I was going to be able to do my stuff with Homer, mm-hmm. but he'd already recorded it, so mm-hmm. I I went and did it and. Uh, okay. And then I had to go back because a couple lines changed. Oh. And so I had to watch the animation and time the movement, the movement lips, with that. Yeah, and that was, that was harder. <laughs> yeah, wow. Did you meet yeah. Matt Groening or Groening? No, I got, to do, yeah. I got to do the round table read with all the characters. No way. So everyone in the show, including, including Matt, uh-huh. was at a table read and we went through the whole script. So each voice came out of each person. <laughs> that must have been weird. It was that insane. <laughs> has to it be. It was insane. That was the coolest part, for yeah. sure. That's I was going to so say, cool. that has to be incredible, but at the same time, like, frightening as hell. Yeah, like, like Millhouse, read... Millhouse is a girl. Really? Yeah. 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 What? <laughs> That's sick. The Simpsons. Look at this, huh? You're sitting epic. next to a movie star, Raj. You look at that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, TV. <laughs> Syndicated. You know, no big deal. <laughs> but what a job, huh? If you ever had to do a, uh, work in the industry, voiceover work. Hmm? It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah but, it, but it's harder because you have to project so much more emotion oh. than you do. I mean, it's all, you know, I sound like some weird actor, but it's true. Like, you, Are you a SAG member? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got to be, right? Got to be a SAG member, yeah. 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 Any new uh, interesting um, partnerships coming up? Maybe Bagel bar- Bites or anything? Or <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready. You ready? Let's do it again, Bagel Bites. Okay. Come on. Let's do it. Uh, uh, no, it. it's funny because it. with the age of social media, a lot of the promotions I do are very short-lived. So okay. Okay. in the coming months, I'm going to do a thing with Chase Bank. So um, really wow. Mostly doing, like, doing talks with them, with small okay. business owners and it's weird. I, you know, I, I still get to skate and do all that stuff, but then I do these, these sort of speaking engagements or corporate oh. um, events, you know, fireside chat type of stuff. And uh, that's awesome. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it allows me to keep doing what I do and, and make ends meet. I mean, okay. for the most part, I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not trying to say it's a struggle, but stuff like that pays really well, yes, especially yes. speaking engagements and it's fun to do it. But it, but it definitely it allows me, it facilitates me being able to skate as much as I can yeah. and still have my ramp and everything. I love it. Yeah. Any, any deals that come across you, you're not really feeling, just th- give us a, throw them our way. All right. Because we'll do anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, even cool. if it's not our, even if it's not our voice, we'll just okay. We'll, yeah. We'll, yeah, there's a speaking engagement in Mexico City that I have come, that might conflict <laughs> with something else. So I'm your man. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Tony Hawk, man, you've said it all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got you've there. You've done it all. Thank you. And you're still going. It it's crazy. Go ahead, Raj. Um, I wanted to ask you about the uh, the Paul Peralta handbook that all the riders got. Oh, you know what? I, by by the time that came out, I was already so established that I didn't even, I didn't even yeah, pay attention yeah, yeah. to it. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I know it, that stuff came out, but it was just like, it's whatever. Like I'm already doing this. Yeah. What did they, what do you mean in the handbook? What happened? Yeah, it was, right? it was oh, more so like, it was like a, it was like a code of conduct. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. For team writers because, because they were just picking up all these team guys and they didn't really know, you know, some people were not vetted and yeah. whatever. I mean, okay. it's all ridiculous in hindsight, mm-hmm. but it I understood why at the time, because they were trying to still be, family friendly, clean cut. And yeah. they were getting yes. these people from all walks of life. And they were like, you're going to represent the brand and, you know, not do this and this and this. But, but the funny thing is, yeah, yes. And I totally understand and, and how ridiculous it all was. Yeah. But if you really look at like, if you look at contracts now that we're signing, uh-huh. there is like code of conduct. Yeah. Oh, totally. Like you can't be, you know, under investigation or right. morality clauses. Yeah. Like it's yeah. all very it, deep in there totally but powell didn't do it in legalese yeah. they did it in their goofy can't be like make mm. sure you clean up after yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah so wow. chet thomas still has it yeah i don't know i didn't sign it <laughs> what about what about uh what about bonite uh bonite was a bummer yeah you see because tommy guerrero said that they just he, they, he broke boards down the middle just for street skating it wasn't the thing like he, he, yeah. he hated it um i think what happened there was that 
whatever their however they got their wood then they sourced their wood mm-hmm. something there was a shortage or there was a problem mm-hmm. and they had to do something super fast and i remember we were on I think we were maybe shooting Animal Chin even, oh. and they were they were FedExing boards to us like, "What does this work? Does this work?" And like, these aren't that good. Oh, really? <laughs> like, we have to do something now. We have to we have to make a decision right now. We're like, well, I guess. Like, <laughs> it sounds like you're doing it anyway, right? Yeah. You know. So they they came out with Bonite as a desperate way to keep manufacturing boards at the time, and you didn't like it. I didn't think it was impressive. I wasn't one to break boards that much. I okay. had so much plastic on my boards that they didn't break generally anyway. <laughs> okay, <right. laughs> but I knew that they weren't the same quality. Yeah. 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 We're going to get to the bottom of this. I think we have gotten to the bottom of the bone. I, I, think, mean, but, uh, I don't know how uh, much deeper to explain it yeah. unless I was <laughs> writing no, purchase we're, orders we're like gonna George get Powell. I think the funny thing about bone, though, is it's like there's a lot of good technology now on boards. You know, like... Powell's new flight boards are supposed to be amazing. Yeah, mm. and like, but know, I still, th- I still think we're due for a sea change in skateboard construction. Yeah, do you I really firmly believe that? Yes. Like, what would it, like what would be? I don't know. I, I, I want to do. I want to do something about that. <laughs> do you really? Not, I do. Yeah. I think. I think it's about time. I think people are afraid of of that change, but I think that it's due. And but like, what would it be? Like, what would it? What would That's change? The question. Tony. What would it change? It would change the longevity of a skateboard. No, but what would you change, You wouldn't snap a, a $60 But as a plank. skateboard company, you want people continually buying your yeah. stuff. And I don't believe it. that, yeah. though. I do, that's the thing. is like I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Yeah. I just haven't had the means or the resources to do anything about it yeah. yet. Hmm. But I want to do something about it. What and and whatever. I'm not the Pied Piper. But uh, carbon fiber. If I knew what, what it was, I'd have it already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the bottom of this now, Tony. You Let's know, take we've, a break a job. What's but that? Think people, like those lip tech boards were pretty strong. It could be along those lines. Yeah. But people just, I think, like generally like the wood, just the normal wood. Yeah, how it fails. Yeah. But I think that there's an element of that that is afraid of change. True. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people are scared of change. Yeah. Yeah. The, I guess the, the 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 paradox of skateboarding is that it's super progressive and it and it's you know individual and it's artistic, mm-hmm. but people fall in line a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. With products and with fashion and whatever and mm-hmm. we gotta we gotta break out of that maybe does the plan b have something like that or have we call black ice or something that's just slick bottom, slick oh, bottom. Is, that's all yeah. it is yeah, oh, okay yeah. never mind i thought it ever was slick. something's yeah. coming you know something's gonna happen yeah yeah, yeah. You know, I, maybe it's not me but i but i do <laughs> feel like i feel like that's that's missing listen man we have i want to give you a gift really yes you gave us a bobblehead <laughs> i did we don't have any bobbleheads of us, but uh, maybe some sometime soon. Kelly, will you go please grab uh, Tony Hawk? A couple, give him a long sleeve tee or something, and a, and a mug. You know. All right, man. Thank this you. has been amazing, Tony Hawk. Episode one hundred, Raj. Woo! Can you believe it? Episode one hundred minutes. This is going to be a long one. Yeah, people are going to love this. I am. I am uh, very curious of what happens with Riley here. But right, but, I, but I've I've met him. But I haven't really hung out with him or mm-hmm. even, you know, sh- sh- shot the shat with him. Shot the shat? Shoot the shit. Shot the shat. <laughs> shot the sh- Shoot the shat with him. I've never shot the sh- shoot the shat. I've never shot. Th- here's, here's your sweater. Well, you must not, you must not your ride sweater motorcycles. And uh, there's a nine club Thank sweater you. for you. And here's a nine club long sleeve tee. You're skinny like I am, right? You're a little, th- you're thinner guy. I like do to you, think so, but maybe not you, so much more uh, you tend to wear more uh, long sleeve stuff because I, I I'm skinny. I wear long. Uh, I tend to wear long sleeves. Not not it's, intentionally. It's just it's okay. just been like kind of weird and yeah, you know, cloudy and yeah, cold yeah, outside. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. just wondering because it's uh, that's my own personal thing. Yeah, I, yeah no, I'm not trying to project some goth thing or anything. Okay, <laughs> here's a uh, an, 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 uh, oh this is sweet. An Apple Yard you. mug. Just throw them on your Instagram well, or something. Actually, he's yeah. the sponsor. He used to sponsor him. So we should give him the set. <laughs> I did. Yeah. yeah, he needs Kelly's mug too. Oh, Kelly, oh, yeah. go get him the set then. All right. Go get him the mug. Yeah, Mark Appleyard, huh? Yes. I told him not to quit his day job. But <laughs> Have you guys uh, seen IG Picasso? Oh, no. Uh. He draws celebrities. No way. In the, in the absolute worst, best way. Oh, I got to check it he out. he drew me yesterday, and really? I was hugely honored. Did you see, see it? No. Yeah. This is the rad stuff that Tony, that you get to experience that other people don't. It was, I'll show you. Here's, a, here's Kelly's mug, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sweet. Thank yeah. you. Me yeah, dress back I feel like I, I can... Okay, so I need to put... But if I'm going to use the these, set. I need to put this one over here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep, 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 so yep, like, yep. Like that, right? right? Yeah. Yep. Right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this uh, IG uh, Picasso. Okay, well, so he, Somebody he draws celebrities mm-hmm. um, like... 
this. Oh my god. <laughs> so he drew me. <laughs> you have a square head. Oh yeah, yeah, no, but that's big time. You don't understand. That's and, amazing. And with, with our kids, mm -hmm. I made it. You made it. <laughs> like there was a yeah. time where, you know, being on Nickelodeon was I made it. Uh -huh. If I'm on IG Picasso Instagram feed, I made it in our kids' <laughs> eyes. So <laughs> this is big time. Did you ever get slimed on Nickelodeon? I, I jumped into slime. You jumped <laughs> into the slime. Jam ramp. <laughs> wow. But I jumped, I, I had the Huck Jam ramp and then the jump and then I just landed in a pool of slime. <laughs> <laughs> and when I came up, my son Spencer was, I don't know, maybe three at the time, okay. two or three. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, ah, like, I want to be in the slime. And I, I grabbed him and put him halfway in. He's like, no. Get back. <laughs> and then I have, I have this slimy kid and I'm trying to hand him off. And like, everyone's like, I don't, I you don't, don't want to touch him. him. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one dad was like, Skin to me. Like, yeah, like, it's fine. Yeah, Tony Hawk's kid slime all over me. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I felt bad for the guy. I was like, "Thanks, dude. Thanks." Because I couldn't, like, I couldn't get out of here with Could him. Get it? Yeah, yeah, you're slimy. Yeah. <laughs> no, this has been an honor, dude. Thank, Thank you, you so seriously. much for coming by, for me. and celebrating yeah. our, uh, our our milestone that we think we've hit. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Tony Hawk. Hi, right, buddy. Thank you. And, um, dude, I can't wait out. to see if you guys, I mean, uh, any other skate parts come, maybe a Lakai part or something. Are you going to do anything with them or what are we, what are we looking at? Huh? I swear, I feel like I just finished that 50 tricks video yesterday. I know so. when we want more. <laughs> oh, we yeah. want more. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll give you a little break. You just then. watch, yeah. Watch my Instagram. If something comes okay. up. <laughs> okay. We'll do that. Something come, I'm not, I'm not collecting for a part now, so I'll okay. be piecing it out. Let's put well, it that listen, way. You've, yeah. done, you've done enough. Okay. Uh, uh, you've thank done you. enough. Yes. But we like, we all. still want to see you've done it all. But you we still want to see more. We can't we can't get all enough right, of trying. Tony. We can't Thank get you. enough of you. Thank you very much. Thanks for hey, I'm I'm just excited to still be doing this at my age. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you for everything. Thank as, you. Yeah, as skateboarders, we thank you, dude. Yeah. Just for everything that right, for paving it. the way. Yeah. I don't want this to end, Tony. I want to keep going. <laughs> I want to keep going. I enjoy your company. <laughs> Do you want to go get some you. coffee after this? Should we go get a, go to Starbucks or something? Hang we're out. Gonna go, you want to hang we're out? We're gonna go fight traffic go on the way out. home. Ooh. Okay. Well, maybe we could eat a bagel bite together before you leave. Oh yeah. Come on. Let's do it ceremoniously. Oh yeah. <laughs> we, really have yeah. To. we have to have a bagel. I mean, bite they're with cold Tony now, home. but oh, here we go. <laughs> it's all. Good. This is. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Here, here we go. go. Yes. Take a bagel bite, Raj. Is this one with bacon on it, Raj? Pepperoni. You know it. Pepperoni. Come Cheers. on. Cheers. Pepperoni. Cheers. Huh? Want one, Kelly? I'll have one. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, Fatty, come get one. Oh, not bad. I actually like them better microwaved. That's just me, though. They're more softer and chewier. They're good. I like them crispy. Tony, you like them crispy. Yeah. Huh? <laughs>